Oh, praise it to the most. So tonight's topic is called Understanding Acts chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. Understanding Acts chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. We're going to go over that. We're going to go over the, the book of Acts, the second chapter. Okay. I need you brothers to pay attention, sisters as well. All right. All oh, praises to the most. Sir. Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 18. Let's read that. The book of Isaiah chapter 29, verse 18. Come on. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. Mm -hmm. And the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. So now Isaiah is prophesying that in the last days, the spirit of Christ will be upon him and the spirit of Christ will be upon the people that believe that will apply what this Bible is saying. It says the deaf will hear the words of this book and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. Because today in these last days, our people don't understand the Bible. But all praises to the Most High, the Lord is raising up prophets in these last days so our people may hear and learn the things that are written in this book and understand them. Read that again, verse 18. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 18. Right. And in that day shall mm -hmm. the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. He says, he says, in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. Because as a people, we are deaf. You understand? Because the way in which our, we, we have been taught as a people by our enemies, our people, have, our enemies have taught us that we must not hear this book. You understand? They taught us to hate everything that this book represents and it stands for. And this book, the book of our fathers, you understand? Now watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of um, Hebrews chapter 5, okay? Give me, give me Hebrews 5 verse 11. I'm going to show you during the time when the apostle Paul was teaching, the people did not understand what he was saying. Because he was teaching the Hebrews, you understand, that they're no longer supposed to follow animal sacrifice because Christ is that ultimate sacrifice. And they couldn't understand that. So it is today. Our people don't understand that they're supposed to keep God's commandments in the faith of Christ. It's a huge stumbling block. Okay, read that. Hebrews 5 verse 11. Come on. The book of Hebrews chapter 5 verse 11. Go ahead. Of whom we have many things to say. Mm -hmm. And hard to be uttered, seeing he are dull of hearing. You see what the Apostle Paul was saying to the Hebrews? He says they were dull of hearing. He was teaching them about Christ, but they were, their, their, their ears were blocked. They couldn't understand what he was saying. They were dull of hearing. Why? Watch this. Give me 2 Timothy 2. Okay. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. I'm going to show you the reason behind it. The same thing that was happening back then, it's happening today. The stumbling block back then was that they, they didn't understand that they must move away from animal sacrifices. You understand? And the reason why that was the point was because the temple was still standing. You understand? It was only until, until 70 AD when there was, the temple was no longer standing. You understand? But what I'm showing you is that many of our people back then, they didn't understand that they must let go of animal sacrifice. So today, the problem with our people today they don't understand that they must keep the commandment under Christ. Watch this. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Okay. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Let's read verse. Let's read verse 18. Okay. 2 Timothy 2 verse 18. We're going to read down. Come on. 2 Book of Timothy chapter 2 verse 18. Go ahead. Who concerning the truth have heard. You see that thing? Say it says who. Hold on. Who concerning the truth have heard. Let's deal with that before we go, we move any further. It says who, meaning our people, when it comes to the truth, they have heard, they are in error. You understand? They are in They are in the wrong. They don't understand concerning the truth. Get that in, in Psalms 119 verse 142. Let's see what the truth is, that our people are in error. Okay? Read that. Psalms 119 verse 142. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Read. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, mm -hmm. and thy law is the truth. You see that thing? And thy law is the truth. He's saying the righteousness of the Lord is everlasting. You understand? 
The laws of God is everlasting. Give me that in 2nd uh, Ezra 9, 37. 2nd Ezra chapter 9, verse 37. Because Ezra said the same thing. You understand? So it was a huge stumbling block back then for our people, so it is today. Okay, read that. 2nd Ezra 9. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 9, verse 37. Mm -hmm. Notwithstanding, the law perisheth not, but remaineth in his force. You see that thing? It says, notwithstanding, the law perisheth not. Meaning the laws of God is everlasting. God's righteousness is everlasting. He says it perisheth not, but remaineth in his force. Meaning the laws of God are in full effect. That's what he's saying. Okay, let's go back. Go back to 2 Timothy now, chapter 2. Okay, 2 Timothy 2, verse 17, verse 18. One more again. Go ahead. 2 Book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 18. Read. Who concerning the truth have erred. You see that thing? It says, our people concerning the laws of God, they are in error. He's going to tell you why. Keep reading. Go ahead. Saying the resurrection is past already uh -huh. and overthrow the faith of some. You see that thing? And the, the reason why, they, the way they've erred in the truth, in the knowledge of the truth is that they're saying the resurrection is past already, meaning Christ died for our sins. Christ fulfilled the law. I guess that's what they say. So that meaning we don't have to keep the law because Christ fulfilled the law. Christ was our righteousness. That's what they say in the Christian church. So that's why it says concerning the truth, they have erred. Now when we teach them that the laws of God are not done away with, they are dull of hearing. You understand? Because why? Christ died already. That's their thought process. That's how they reason it out. That's how they block the understanding of the scriptures. Read again. Second book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 18. Go ahead. Who concerning the truth have heard, mm -hmm. saying that the resurrection is past already and uh -huh. overthrow the faith of some. And they overthrow the faith of many of our people that truly want to do what the Bible says. But because they are being taught that Christ died for our sins, so we don't have to keep no laws, now they overthrow the faith of some. Many of, some of our people that want to repent. You understand? That's why when we teach our people God's laws, it's a, like it's a stumbling block to them. They don't understand because they say no, but Christ fulfilled the law. Get that in Matthew 5. And this is the scriptures they use. You understand? They use the scriptures in Matthew 5 and they use the scripture in Romans 2. They go to the letters of Paul. Okay, Matthew chapter 5, read verse 17. The book of Matthews, chapter 5, verse 17. Come on. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or Wait. the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. It says, think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. Meaning Christ, this is Christ speaking. He says, don't think that I'm coming to destroy what is written in the law and what the prophet said. He says, I'm not coming to destroy that. But he says, I am not come to destroy. He's repeating himself again. I'm not coming to destroy but to fulfill, meaning I'm going to fulfill what the prophets, what, what Moses said in the law and what the prophet prophesied about me concerning himself. You understand? He says, I'm coming to fulfill. What did he come to fulfill? Give me that in Luke. Okay, Luke chapter 24, verse 44. Let's understand what Christ came to fulfill because that's why it says when it, when it concerns the truth, when it concerns the law, our people are in error. Why? Because they say Christ fulfilled the law. Meaning what? The resurrection is past already. Christ fulfilled the law. That's their thought. But they, don't, they need to understand what in the law did Christ fulfill that was written in the law and what was written in the prophets. Okay? Luke 24, verse 44. Luke, read that. The book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 44. Come on. And he said unto them, read. These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled, which are written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. You see that thing? It says that all things which are written must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses. You understand what Moses prophesied about Christ and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me, meaning concerning himself. That all things were written the old things that were written were fulfilled regarding Christ. 
you understand what he would do when he when when he was born you understand what he would do for the 12 tribes of Israel he fulfilled all of that give me that in Acts chapter 3 verse 18 okay Acts 3 verse 18 I'm going to show you the reason why our people they are dull of hearing is because of what is because of they are using these scriptures but they don't understand what they mean because they don't apply God's laws Okay, the book of Acts chapter 3 verse 18. Let's see what Christ fulfilled. That was written, that was written about him in the Psalms, in the prophets, and in the law. Read it. The book of Acts chapter 3 verse 18. Go ahead. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets, that yeah. Christ should suffer, he had so fulfilled. You see that thing? The things that was that were showed unto all the prophets, you understand, and what the prophets prophesied about that Christ should suffer, he had so fulfilled. When Christ suffered, when he died for the 12 tribes of Israel, all of that, he fulfilled all of that. You understand? So, but our people, you, that, that's a stumbling block to our people. So now, because they say the resurrection is passed already, it's overthrowing their faith. That's why they don't want to obey what the Bible is saying, because they say Christ fulfilled the law but they don't understand what it means. You understand? Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Romans 6, because this is another one that they use. I'm just gonna, I'm not, I'm, I'm just gonna pick some, some scriptures that they use, you understand? To, to what? To overthrow the faith of some, our people that don't understand this book. Read that. Romans chapter 6, read verse 14, okay? Romans 6 verse 14. Watch this. The book, the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. You see that thing? It says, for sin shall not have dominion over you. What is sin? The breaking of God's laws. It says, for because ye are not under the law, but under grace. And that's where our people stumble right there. They don't know which law we're no longer under. Which law was done away with now that we're under grace. We're under the grace of Christ. The chance for us to get our minds right. You understand? So that's why today our people, they are dull of hearing. Why? Because they say the resurrection has passed already. Meaning Christ died, he fulfilled the law. So we are not under the law, we are under grace. That means in their minds, how does it translate in their mind? I don't, I can do, I, I don't have to keep any laws. I can do whatever I want. You understand? Because Christ fulfilled the law. No one can keep the commandments in the Bible. There's just too many of them. Nobody can keep all the laws. That's what they teach in the church. And that's how they overthrow the faith of our people. And our people, they trust in that. You understand? Read again. The book of Romans chapter 6 verse 14. Read. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Mm -hmm. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. He says, but ye are not under the law, but under grace. Watch this. When ye are not under the law. Watch this. Give me the book of Jeremiah 31, 31. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 31. Watch this. I'm going to show you something here. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 31. Read that. The book of Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 31. Go ahead. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. You see that thing? So it says the days come, meaning future prophecy. You understand? This. Remember, Jeremiah is writing this around 600, 6, 605 BC, 606, 605 BC. That's around that time, during the time of the Kushites. You understand? So it says, behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Meaning what? We're gonna, he's letting us know that we're gonna what? We're gonna move away from the what? From the covenant of animal sacrifice. That's what Jeremiah is prophesying about. You understand? Go ahead. Not according to the covenant that I had made with their fathers in the day that I took them, that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although mm -hmm. I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. You see that thing? It says, not according to the covenant that I made their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Because what was the covenant? The covenant that we that the Lord made with us when we came out of Egypt, what covenant was that? Give me that in Psalms 50 verse 5. Let's see the covenant that the Lord made with us and our forefathers when we came out of Egypt. Read that. 
Psalms 50 verse 5. Let's understand what that is. Go ahead. The book of Psalms chapter 50 verse 5. Come on. Gather my saints together unto me. Mm -hmm. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. You see that thing? Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So that is the covenant that the Lord made with us when we came out of Egypt with Moses during the Exodus. You understand? So he's letting us know that, listen, a new covenant is coming. The, and that covenant is not the, the covenant that I made with you when I came, when I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians. Not that covenant, but a new covenant under Christ. So what is it? Jeremiah's prophesying is letting us know, listen, there's a new covenant that's coming. That's what he's saying to us right there. Okay. Now watch this. Go back to Jeremiah 31. Read verse 32 again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 32. Mm -hmm. Not according to the covenants that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although mm -hmm. I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. Read. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inner parts and write it in their hearts and Amen. will be their God and they shall be my people. You see what it's, it's letting you know the new covenant is with the house of Israel. Just like the old covenant was with the 12 tribes of Israel. So guess what? The new covenant also is also going to be with the house of Israel. That's why it says, I will be their God. I'm going to be their God and they shall be my people. It's letting you know the old covenant of animal sacrifice was with the 12 tribes, and the new covenant also is with the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? It's not going to be the covenant that we had, the same covenant, but it's going to be a new covenant under Christ. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in um, Romans 10. Okay, give me Romans 10, verse 4 and 5. Romans 10, verse 4 and 5. Okay, come on. The book of Romans. Chapter 10, verse 4. Wait. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. You see what he's saying? He says, Christ is the end of the law. Which law? The law of animal sacrifice. Because Christ became the sacrificial lamb. You understand? So Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. Which, he says what? Uh, for is, is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth is the end of the law for righteousness. Because how did we get righteousness uh, before Christ? How, did, how was our righteousness? Our righteousness was through animal sacrifice when, under the old covenant. Under the new covenant now, our righteousness is under what? Under Christ by accepting Christ's sacrifice that he made, plus keeping of the commandments. He's going to tell you that. Keep reading. Verse 5. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law. Stop right there. That the says, man for because Moses described the righteousness which is of the law. Which law? The law of animal sacrifice. You understand? We received atonement for our sins for an animal dying on our behalf. Go ahead. That the man which doeth those things shall live by them. By but the man that doeth those sacrifices may live by those sacrifices. But we're no longer under that now. We are under the new covenant. That's why it says Christ is the end of the law. In the law of animal sacrifice. How did he end that? Get that in Ephesians 5 and 2. Okay. Ephesians chapter 5 is 2. The reason why I'm going over this is because that's a stumbling block for our people. You understand? That's why now people, it's difficult for them to, have to comprehend the fact that they have to keep the laws of God under Christ. They don't understand that. Okay. Read that. Ephesians 5 verse 2. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2. And Come walk on. in love. As Christ mm -hmm. also loved us and had given Read. himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. You see that thing? So the, our Lord and Savior says he gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice. So when he says Christ is the end of the law, what law? The law of animal sacrifice. Christ ended that. You understand? He ended that law of animal sacrifice. Now, we accept the sacrifice that he made plus keeping of the commandments. 
So we have we now we have faith in his, the, his sacrifice plus keeping of the commandments. You understand? So now let's go back. Let's go back to Romans 6, verse 14. One more again. Romans 6, verse 14. Okay. The book of Romans, chapter 6, verses 14. Come on. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Mm -hmm. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. You see that thing? It says, for sin shall not have dominion. The breaking of God's laws must not have rule over you. Is, you understand? It says, for ye are, are not under the law. Which law? The law of animal sacrifice. But we are under grace. We are under Christ now. So we keep, we accept the sacrifice that he made plus keeping of the commandments. You understand? Revelation 14 verse 12. Let's get there. Revelation chapter 14 verse 12. Read that for me real quick. Okay, come on. The book of Revelation chapter 14 verse 12. Where? Here is the patience of the saints. Mm -hmm. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. You see that thing? Here are they that keep the commandments of God and, and the faith of Jesus Christ. So we keep the commandments plus our faith in the sacrifice of Christ. That's what he's saying right there. You understand? That's all he's saying. Now go back to Isaiah 29 verse 18. Okay. Isaiah 29 verse 18. The book what of the Isaiah. Lord says he will do. This is what the Lord says he will do in these last days. So pay attention. Come on. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 29, verses 18. Read. And in the day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the mm -hmm. eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. You see what he's saying? In that day shall the deaf hear. Now we are hearing the words of this book now, because our ears was, was dull of hearing. So the most High God is opening our ears now for us to hear what this Bible is saying. You understand? That's why it says in that day, which day? In these last days. It says, shall the deaf hear the words of the book? You understand? And the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity. Watch this. Give me that in uh, Psalms 119. Okay. Psalms 119 verse 18. Psalms 119 verse 18. Read that. The book of Psalms chapter 119 verse 18. Mm -hmm. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. You see that thing? Open thou mine eyes that I may behold, that I may see wondrous things out of thy law. So that's what the Lord is saying He will do for us in these last days. That's why we are able to open this book, and the Spirit of the Lord is able to show us what's going on when we keep His commandments. The Lord will give us the spirit of truth. The spirit of understanding what this Bible is saying. That's what's going on right now. You understand? Okay, so now go back. Isaiah 29, verse 18 again. The book of Isaiah 7, 29, verse 18. Mm -hmm. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of mm -hmm. darkness. You see that thing? We're going to see out of obscurity because the Lord will open our eyes. We're going to see out of darkness because the most high God will show us really the place that we're in. The people that are surrounding us, these nations that are around about us, the most high God is going to show us their true intentions, what their minds is like and what their, what their, what their intentions is, is, is about us, how they truly feel about us. The most high God says, I'm going to show you all that. You understand? We're going to see out of darkness, meaning out of sin. Because right now we are, we are what? As a nation, we're breaking God's commandments. So we're in gross darkness. That's why the Most High God is sending the prophets to bring out this light. Give me that in John chapter 3. Okay. Let's look at it. John chapter 3, read verse 19. Okay. John 3 verse 19. Let's read that. The book of John chapter 3 verse 19. Go ahead. And this is the condemnation. That light is come into the world and so men light, love darkness. The light that is come into the world is what? Is Christ. The spirit of Christ, which is the laws of God. Light is come into the world. Get that in Proverbs 6.23 real quick. This is the condemnation that light is come into the world. Okay. So light will condemn the world. 
the spirit of Christ, the laws of God will condemn the evils that are happening on this earth. Okay, read that. Proverbs 6.23, come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 23. Read. For the commandment is a lamp, and uh -huh. the law is light. The law is what? And, re and the law is light. And the law is light. The law is light. Come on. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So the laws of God, that's the light. And that light's job is to do what? To reprove, to correct, to set things in order. That's what the laws of God is about. The laws of God is not, is not, is not a book of codes. No, no, it's a book of life. To teach our people how to come out of darkness and into the marvelous light of Christ. So go back. John chapter 3, verse 19 again. The book of John chapter 3, verse 19. Read. And this is the condemnation, that mm -hmm. light is coming to the world. So the and laws men... of God, the, hold on, the laws of God, the spirit of Christ is come into the world. Read. And men loved darkness rather than light. You see that thing? Remember what we read in Isaiah. The, 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 in Isaiah, the law says, listen, it's going to come a time where you're going to see out of obscurity and you're going to see out of darkness. But here we're reading, it says, but men loved darkness rather than light. They love what? Sin. Sin. Get that in Surah chapter 11. Okay. Ecclesiasticus. Surah chapter 11 might be verse 16 or 18. Surah 11 verse 16. Let's read that. Okay. It says, men love darkness rather than light. But the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of light, is what's going to what is going to help us to see out of darkness. But our people, the reason why they fight it is because they love sin more than God's laws. Read that. Surah 11 verse 16. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 11 verse 16. Go ahead. Error and darkness had their beginning together with sinners. Mm -hmm. And evil shall wax old with them that glory therein. You see that thing? And evil will wax old with them that glory therein. Who's the them? The sinners that love error in darkness. That's what the Lord is talking about. What is that? Sin. Because our people, they love sin. That's what God is saying right there. Watch this. Give me the book of Psalm 66, verse 18. Psalm 66, verse 18. It says, men love darkness rather than light. Psalm 66, verse 18. Let's read that. Okay. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 66, verses 18. Read. If I regard iniquity in my heart, mm -hmm. the Lord will not hear me. Read that again. Read it right. Come on. Verse 18 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 66, verse 18. Mm -hmm. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. You see what he's saying? He says, if I regard iniquity in my heart. What is iniquity? Sin. If I regard sin, the word regard means to hold in high esteem. You, you, you hold sin in high esteem. It says what? It says the Lord will not hear you. The Lord will not hear you if you regard sin in your mind. If you, you, if you hold sin in high regard and high respect in your mind, the Lord says, I'm not going to hear you. That means what? You love darkness rather than light. So let's go back to John 3, okay? John 3, verse 8, verse 19, again. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 19. Read. And this is the condemnation, that mm. light is coming to the world. Read. And men loved darkness rather than light, Come on. because they are deeds were evil. Their deeds were what? Because their deeds were evil. Because their deeds were evil. The reason why you see our people, they hate the laws of God, they hate the prophets. When we show up already, the people are upset, the people are mad as hell, is because their deeds are evil. Our people don't want to repent. And let me tell you why, the reason why our people get mad. The reason why our people get mad is that, especially the people that know you, especially the people that used to know you, how you used to be before you came into this truth, you used to do evil with them. You understand? You used to partake in the evil. Used to celebrate Christmas, New Year, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's Day. All men of evil used to partake with them. 
The reason why they get angry is because now you repent and say, I'm not doing that anymore. Then you come back and correct them in the evil that you used to do with them. That's the anger. That's why they get mad. Because you used to do it with them. Why do you think our people will be treating like robots? Is because you used to do evil with them before, but now you're no longer doing it anymore. The problem is that when you correct them, they're like, but you used to do them. But yes, I don't do that no more. So I'm now bringing the light so you can repent as well and get your mind right. So that's why I, that's the reason why you see, especially family members, they get mad as hell. Because why? You are a reminder of what they, you, you, are, you are a reminder, you understand, of the fact that they are not, they don't want to change. That's the point. You understand? So now, keep reading. Verse 20, come on. The book of John chapter 3, verse 20. Mm -hmm. For everyone that doeth evil hated the light. So everyone that does that does evil, everyone that what that they regard iniquity in their heart, the Lord says they what they do what it says everyone that what that doeth evil hated the light because they regard iniquity in their mind. They worship sin. They worship their sin. Go ahead. Neither cometh to the light. They don't want to open the things. Bible. They don't want to open the Bible. Lest what? Lest his deeds should be reproved. Because they are going to be corrected. The laws of God will correct them. Will correct their behavior. The prophets will bring the scriptures up to correct them. What they are doing wrong. And how they are supposed to do it according to the scriptures. They are going to be mad at you. Why? Because they, hear what, they are one with their sin. They regard iniquity in their mind. You understand? Keep reading. Verse 21. The book of John chapter 3 verse 21. Read. But he that doeth. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light. So if you do the law. If you are, remember what the truth is. The truth is the laws of God. But he that applies the laws of God. Guess what they do? Is as they come to the light. So they keep going. They keep wanting to get more and more and more. Understanding what this Bible is saying. You understand? Read. The book of John chapter 3 verse 21. But he that doeth Read. truth cometh to the light. Uh -huh. That his deeds may be made manifest. That they, that they are wrote in God. You see that thing? It says, it says, but he that doeth the truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, because you're going to be an example to the what those that are not have not come into this truth. You become that example to them. You understand? That they are wrought in God, meaning you keep God's commandments. You fear the Lord. You'll do what the Bible is saying. You're not going to make excuses what the scripture says to. You understand? So the most that God is saying, I'm going to have mercy upon you in these last days. I'm going to what? I'm going to take you out of obscurity. I'm going to take you out of darkness. But what I'm reading, what we're reading here is that our people love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil, because they know they are going to be reproved. That's why when we come with the Bible, our people don't like that. When we teach the Bible and they can see we apply it, our people don't like that. That's why they flock to the Christian church because in the Christian church, they do what? They, they embold them in their sins because they don't open the Bible to bring the light. So they can get rid of the darkness in their hearts, the evils, the demons, you understand? all these evil spirits, they don't want to get rid of them. That's why. You understand? Now watch this. Now give me the book of Acts 2.16. Okay? I just wanted to show you what we're reading in the book of Isaiah. The Lord says he will open our eyes in these last days. So I'm putting the pieces of the puzzle together so you can understand. Give me the book of Acts 2.16. Read that. This is how the Lord is like, you know what? Go back to Isaiah. Go back to Isaiah 29 verse 18 again. Okay, because I know some of you forgot already. Isaiah 29, verse 18. Read it again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 18. Read. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, mm -hmm. and the eyes, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. Now I'm going to show you how the Lord will do that day. Get that in Acts 2, 16 now. Acts 2, verse 16. Come on. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 16. Read. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Okay? We're going to know what the, this is. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith, the, saith God. 
Mm -hmm. I will pour out my I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Really? And your young men shall see visions. Mm -hmm. And your old men shall bring dreams. Now read, read, now watch this. You see what we're reading here? The, the, the Luke, is, Luke is writing what was going on during the time of the Feast of Pentecost. You understand? Because this is what is, this is going into. Okay. So what we're reading here, the Lord is saying, listen, in the last days, this is what I'm going to do for my sons and daughters. You understand? Keep reading. Okay, verse 18. Come on. The book of Acts chapter 2, verse 18. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. So now the Lord is saying, listen, in the last days, it says what? It says he will pour out of his spirit upon all flesh. You understand? He says the young men shall see visions, and the old men shall dream dreams. The Lord says he's going to bless us with the understanding of this Bible, and we are going to apply it. Both men and women, children and the children. You understand? The sons and our daughters. Now watch this. Now watch this. What I'm going to show you here was going on here. What the what Joel, what, what what they are what they are what the Lord what they are quoting here in verse 15. I mean verse 16. We're going to read about in the book of Joel. But I want to show you what's really going on with this verse because Christians love to use this verse all the time. You understand? I'm going to shut down every Christian doctrine. You understand? That is what is that is a stumbling block in the minds of our people. Read verse 16 again. Okay, come on. The book of Acts chapter 2 verse 16. Go ahead. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. We know. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. Mm -hmm. I will pour out of my spirit. I, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And right there. on your tongue. It says... Hold on. It says he shall pour out of his spirit upon his spirit upon all flesh. So they use that part. He say, you see, all flesh, meaning everybody on earth, all nations on earth. We're going to see if that's true. Keep reading. Go ahead. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your mm -hmm. young men shall see vision and your old men shall dream dreams. Another thing he says, when he says, and your your daughter shall prophesy. That's why they, they justify women being women being uh, preachers in the church. Your bishop Jezebels and all that. They like to use this verse right here to say, you see, who Pastor Mukuba? You understand? Who who Serita Jakes? Who I need a why need a them? They are the ones that they are using this verse right here to say, you see, and your daughter shall prophesy. They justify women standing in the pulpit teaching the men in the church, which they are out of order because they don't understand this verse. Read on. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. Now, now let's understand. You see verse 16 when it says, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. What is the this that was spoken by the prophet Joel? We need to understand what that is. Okay, give me Joel 2.28. But, but, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. So what is he saying? He says, I'm going to quote the prophet Joel. So they are quoting the prophet Joel here. Read that. The book of Joel. Chapter 2, verses 28. Come on. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will mm -hmm. pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. That's the same thing we read in the book of Acts. Go ahead. And also upon the servants and upon the and upon the handmaids. In those days will I pour out my spirit. So the Lord is saying, listen, in this, in the last days, I'm gonna pour out my spirit upon all flesh. What is the all flesh making reference to? Jump up to verse 27. You understand? He's going to let you know the all flesh. The young men that shall see visions, that shall see visions, and the daughters that shall prophesy and all that. He's going to tell you who those are. Who's the subject? Read verse 27. The book of Joel, 
chapter 2, verse 27. Come on. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel mm -hmm. and that I am the Lord your God and none yes. else. And my people shall never be ashamed. You see what he's saying? He says, I'm in the midst of Israel and I am the Lord, your God, you Israelites, and none else. I'm not the God of all nations. So the subject matter is about the children of Israel, whose God says he's only the God of the 12 tribes of Israel. So he said, when he says upon all flesh, he's talking about the children of Israel, the 12 tribes. So that's where what we read in the book of Acts is quoted in the book of Joel. So let's go back now. Go back to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2, verse 16 again. Read that. Acts 2, verse 16. Come on. The book of Acts chapter 2, verse 16. Mm -hmm. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Stop right there. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. What is that this that was spoken by the prophet Joel? Jump up to verse 1. Let's read it in context now. Watch this. Acts 2, verse 1. Come on. The book of Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Read. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. He says they were all with one accord in one place. Notice he says the day of Pentecost. Not the days of Pentecost. Not the religion of Pentecost. No, the day of Pentecost. Because Pentecost was a feast. That's why our forefathers came together during this time. Because they were coming to observe the feast of Pentecost. Now watch this. Let's read about that. Let's read about the feast of Pentecost. Get that in Leviticus 23 verse 9. Let's see what is the day of Pentecost. Okay. Leviticus 23 and verse 9. Who's got the example of Bible dictionary? Let's get the definition of the word Pentecost. Okay, read that in the dictionary. The Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Let's see the definition of that word, Pentecost. Okay. Shalom, Israel. Oh, praises. Come on. The definition of Pentecost, reading from the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, page 446. Mm-hmm. Pentecost, the word derives from the Greek for the 50th day. For the what? For the 50th day. For the 50th day. So the word Pentecost means the 50th day. Penta means 50. You understand? Cost means day, meaning the 50th day. Pentecost. Read that again. Pentecost. The word derives from the Greek for the 50th day. Mm -hmm. For the 50th day. Now let's get Leviticus 23 verse 9. Okay. Let's read about the feast of the Pentecost. The feast of Pentecost. Okay. We're going to read about that because what we read in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 16. When it says this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. We are reading about it here in Acts 2 verse 1. But we're going to get it in details in Leviticus the 23rd chapter. Because that's where we read about the high holidays that the Lord ordained. For all 12 tribes. Okay, read that. Leviticus 23 verse 9. Come on. The book of Leviticus chapter 23 verse 9. Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying. Mm -hmm. Speak unto the children of Israel. And say unto them. When ye be come into the land which I give unto you. And mm -hmm. shall reap the harvest thereof. They we shall what? And shall reap the harvest thereof. And you shall reap the harvest thereof. Meaning we come into the land. So we were the, during the during this time when we was in the wilderness, the Lord was 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 using Moses to teach us that when we come into the land, because guess what, we are going to get allotment of land. So each tribe will have land except for the tribe of Levi during that time. You understand? It says when we shall reap the harvest thereof, because we had lands. Okay, go ahead. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, when ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and ye shall reap the harvest of, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the, of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. So we will reap the harvest and bring the first fruits of our harvest unto the priest as an offering. You understand? For the priest and for the priest to do the wave offering and so forth. Okay, go ahead. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. He says, on the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. 
because the Feast of Pentecost is always on a so-called Sunday. You understand? And I'm going to explain it. It's going to be clear as we read down. Go ahead. And he shall offer that day when ye wave the sheaf and he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. You see that thing? It says, and he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering. So this is letting you know, we kept the feast of the Pentecost plus the animal sacrifices that we would do. That's why here it says, and a, for a burnt offering unto the Lord. Go ahead. And the meat offering thereof shall be two tenth deals of fine flour mingled with oil and offering mm. made by fire unto the Lord for a sweet savor. And a drink offering thereof shall be of wine, the fourth part of an hymn. So now, not only did we do the, the, not only were the burnt offerings performed, guess what? We also did what? The meat offerings also were performed during the Feast of Pentecost. The meat offerings is not going into actual meat. It's going into what? Your flowers. You understand? It's going into your oils. You understand? The breads. That's what it's going into if you read Leviticus, the second chapter. Go ahead. And he shall eat neither bread, nor parched corn, mm -hmm. nor green ears, until the selfsame day that ye have brought an offering unto your God. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your you that thing? It says he shall eat neither bread nor pash corn nor green ears until the selfsame day that ye have brought an offering unto your God. Meaning what? Because that's why it's called the first fruits. Before we could eat the first fruits of our harvest, guess what? We, we couldn't touch them until... We brought them as offerings unto the Lord. Then after we've done that, then we can eat the, the we can eat they understand the fruits of our harvest. But those first fruits will go to the Lord, will go to the priests. You understand? That's why it says we must not eat these things. He was not, was he talking about we must not eat them at all? Mm -mm. The first fruits will go to the most high God and the priests. Go ahead. And he shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. From the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. You see what he's saying? It says seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Because remember, when we were observing the Feast of Pentecost, guess what? We were coming from the Feast of the Passover. Okay? So once the Feast of the Passover is done, we're going to count seven complete Sabbaths. We're going to count seven complete Sabbath days. You understand? And then... One day after the seventh Sabbath is complete is the 50th day because seven times seven is 49. So seven Sabbaths, you understand? Then after seven Sabbaths plus one day, which is the 50th day, that's when we arrive at the Feast of Pentecost, the 50th day, you understand? After the Feast of the Passover. Read that again, verse 15. The book of Leviticus chapter chapter 23, verse 15. And he shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbath shall be complete. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete, meaning seven complete Sabbath days. Go ahead. Even unto the morrow after the seven Sabbaths shall ye number 50 days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. You see what he's saying? It says, and he says, even unto the morrow, the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number 50 days. So he's letting you know, it says the morrow after the Sabbath, that's the 50th day, that's plus one day. That will be on a Sunday. You understand? So on that 50th day, that's the Feast of Pentecost. Okay, go ahead. Ye shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two tenth deals. They shall be of fine flour. They shall, be they shall be baking with leaven. They are the first fruits of the, unto the Lord. They are the what? They are the first fruits unto the Lord. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. Jump down to verse 20. Come on. The book of Leviticus chapter 23 verse 20. And the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruit for a wave offering before the Lord. With mm -hmm. the two lambs, they shall be holy to the Lord for the priest. They shall be holy to the Lord for the priest. So this is where you want to read about the Feast of Pentecost. 
you go to Leviticus 23 verse 9 down. He's going to, you're going to get the details of the Feast of Pentecost. And remember, there were sacrifices that we had to perform as well. The burnt offerings, the meat offerings. You understand? We had to perform those because that was, and the drink offerings, because that was what still, we we're still performing animal sacrifices. You understand? So that's what we were doing back then. So guess what? In these last days, we do the same thing. We keep the righteousness of the law without the law. Meaning what? The righteousness of the law, we keep the commandments of the law, the commandments of the Most High God, plus the plus accepting of the sacrifice that Christ made. So now we put our faith in the sacrifice that Christ made, but we still keep the feast. We still keep the feast of Pentecost. Understand that thing. You understand? So now let's go back. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. I just wanted to go there so you can understand what the book of Acts, two, Acts chapter 2 verse 1 is going into. Is explaining the feast of Pentecost, okay? Because in the world today, you've got you've got different Christian denominations. One of them is Pentecostal Church. Pentecostal Church now is a Christian denomination, but Pentecost is a feast day that the Lord ordained to all Israel. But now they've turned it into a religion, and now it has become a religion. You understand, Pentecostal. That's in Pentecostal pillar, they push these things of saying, no, they're speaking in tongues. You understand? Because they base it on Acts 2. They think that in Acts 2, they were doing this shabara shabara stuff that they are doing in the churches, which is far from the truth. You understand? They've just got an unholy demon upon them. Now watch this. Acts 2 verse 1. Let's go. Come on. The book of Acts chapter 2 verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost will come, they were all with one accord in one place. Because they were what? They were gathered together for the Feast of Pentecost. And before that, that we were gathered together for the Feast of the Passover. You understand? So we remained in Jerusalem, those that was in Jerusalem, and our forefathers that also came for the Feast of uh, Passover, they stayed there also to, uh, to observe the Feast of Pentecost. You understand? Because guess what? They also were staying for the Feast of Booths. You understand? The Feast of Tabernacles and so forth. So you understand? So now, keep reading. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and mm. it filled all the house where they were sitting. Come on. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. So now, as they were gathered together during the Feast of Pentecost, the 50th day, you understand? It says, and they appear unto them cloven tongues. The word cloven means diverse, meaning diverse tongues, meaning different tongues were spoken during that time. During that day of the Feast of Pentecost, different languages and tongues were spoken. You understand? Like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. That them is the apostles. Read. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Read verse 4 again. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 4. And they were mm. all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So now it says, it says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Talk about the apostles. It says the apostles were all filled with the Holy Ghost as the Spirit gave them utterance. It says, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now I want to show you something here. You see that part right there when it says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost? Watch this. Give me the book of Acts. Same book. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. I'm going to show you something here. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Okay, read that. The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Mm -hmm. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. So now Christ is saying, listen, it says ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. This type of power that the, the Holy Ghost and the Holy, the Holy Ghost came upon them is the same power that allowed them to speak in different tongues during this time. Is the same power that allowed them to speak in cloven tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That was the miracle. Because the miracle was that when they were, they were speaking in Hebrew, 
But when the, the people, our forefathers that, that, were, that came from different lands where they were scattered, they were able to hear them speak in the languages when in they were born. That was the miracle. But the power of the Holy Ghost here that we're reading about is not the same power that we read about in the book of John. Give me John, hold that. Give me John 20 verse 22. I'm going to show you the difference here. The difference of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost, the difference between during the time when the time of the, the feast of the Pentecost and what we're about to read here in John 20. John 20 verse 22. Watch this. The book of John, chapter 20, verses 22. Go ahead. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. You see that thing? It says, when he has said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. This is different from what we just read in Acts 1 verse 8. Acts 1 and 8 goes into what? The power that was given to the apostles. What power is that? The power to be able to what? To speak in other languages that those of our forefathers that were coming from different lands that grew up in a tongue other than the one that was spoken in Judea, in Galilee. Guess what? That was the power. So it's not the same as this one. This one that we're reading about in John 20 is the understanding of scriptures. That's the power of the, that's the Holy Ghost that we're reading about here. That's why it says he breathed on them and said unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. It's not the truth about the same power that we're reading about in Acts 1 and 8, Acts chapter 2 verse 4. It's not the same thing. Give me that in Luke 24 verse 45 now. Watch this. I'm going to show you what we're reading in John 20 verse 22. It's the same thing that we're going to read here in Luke. Luke 24 verse 45. Come on. The book of Luke chapter 24 verses 45. Mm -hmm. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. You see that thing? He opened their understanding that they may understand the scriptures. He gave them the sense on what the scripture says. So what we're reading in John 20 verse 22 when he says he breathed on them and said unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost is the same thing we're reading here. He gave them understanding of the scriptures. Now what we're reading about in Acts 1 and 8, the, I'm going to show you the example of that. Give me John, give me Matthew 10. Okay. Give me Matthew chapter 10. I'm going to show you the difference. Matthew 10 verse 1. Matthew chapter 10 verse 1. Okay. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to mm -hmm. cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of disease. You see that? So this power right here that he gave them is, is the same power that came upon them when he says, and he says, we shall receive power after that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. That, that's the same power that we're reading about here. This is an example. He says he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. Because they were raising the dead. They were healing the sick. They were just touching them and they were getting healed. You understand? The blind was able to see. The deaf was able to hear. That's what the apostle, that's the power is talking about here. But this power that we're reading about here, it was not going to be forever. It was going to be, it was temporary. It was temporary. The example of that is this. Give me, I'm going to show you something here. Give me the book of James, okay? Give me James. Give me James 5. I'm going to give an example here. I'm giving an example of the power of the Holy Ghost that came upon them. The same power that they were able to want to speak in other languages, the languages of their brothers and sisters that grew up in other lands other than in Judea or Galilee. Okay, watch this. Give me James. Okay, let's go to James 5. I'm going to show you something. James chapter 5 and verse... James 5 verse 14. Start of verse 13. I'm going to show you this. James chapter 5 verse 13. Come on. The book of James chapter 5 verse 18. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing. Let him sing psalms. He says, is any among you afflicted? Yes, we are afflicted as a people. Let, us, let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Go ahead. Watch this. Verse 14. In, 
Is any sick among you? Did him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing mm -hmm. him with oil in the name of the Lord? You see what you see that part right there? Listen to the difference. Remember the apostle James. I mean, James was one of the apostles. He was one of the apostles that received power in Matthew 10. But here you notice what he's saying. He says, is any sick among you? Remember what we read in Matthew 10. Go back to Matthew, because I know some of you forgot. Matthew 10 verse 1. Read verse 1 again. So we understand what the apostle James is saying right here. Okay, read that. The book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to mm -hmm. cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of disease. You see that thing? To heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. So you keep reading. So he gave them power to heal sicknesses and diseases, right? Read on. Verse 2. Now, now, the names of the 12 apostles are these. The first mm -hmm. Simon. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 2. Now, the name of the 12 apostles are these. The first, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. You see that thing? James, the son of Zebedee. James. This is the apostle James. You understand? Okay. He says, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. Now, let's go back. I'm going to show you something here. Now, give me James chapter 5, verse 14 again. Because remember, he gave them power to heal all sicknesses and all diseases. But listen, during this time here, when the apostle was, the apostle James is prophesying. Listen, li listen to the change that letting you know that that power that was given to them in Matthew 10, the power that they received in, in, in Acts 2 was, was only temporary. You understand? Read that. Here's an example. Read it. The book of James, chapter 5, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. You see what, you see what we're doing now? It says, is any of you, is any sick among you? He says, call for the elders of the church. Remember now, the apostle James is saying, listen, that power that we had when, we, when Christ was, was walking the earth and on all that, we no, longer have, we no longer have that power. You understand? It was going to come to a point where it was going to come to an end. That's why it says now, when somebody is sick, it says what? Call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him. That's one. Then it says anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. That's why you see, you, 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 you get, you get um, these, you see these pastors that they have this holy anointing oil. They say, because it's not holy because they're not keeping the commandments. So it has no impact whatsoever. But the apostle James is telling us, he says, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. So when we have oil, that holy anointing oil is usually olive oil and so forth. You understand? We put it on your forehead. You understand? We pour it on your head and we anoint you with oil. We pray for you. We fast. We keep the commandments. We keep you in your prayers and we keep you in our prayers. That's all we can do now. That's what the Lord is saying right there. So when you see these pastors, they say, no, holy anointing oil and all of that, they get it from you, but they're not keeping the laws of God. They are, they are not keeping God's commandments. Okay? The apostle James is telling us what we must do now. Because the only thing that's left now is only signs. Give me that in 2nd Exodus 9, because I know some of you are don't, don't get it. Okay? Let's get that. 2nd Exodus 9. Okay? 2nd Exodus chapter 9, verse 6. Read that for me. Okay. Second book of Esther, chapter 9, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Even so, the things also of the highest have plain beginnings in wonders and powerful works and endings in effects and signs. You see what it says? The things of the most high God, they began in wonders and powerful signs. Just like during the time of the Acts of the Apostles, they received the, those powers. You understand? So, but it says, an ending in effects and signs. What are those signs? The curses. Those signs 
the effects and the signs, it goes into the curses that are written in Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 through 68. You understand? So that's what he's talking about. Okay. Now watch this. Now, I, I, I went here to give an example of the, 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 the differences in when it says he shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. Verses, he breathed on them and said unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. You understand? Everybody get that? Y yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, let's go to the book of Acts now. Go back to Acts. Go back to Acts. Okay, Acts chapter 2. Read this for again. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 4. Read. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You see that thing? It says they, what? It says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, with the power. You understand that we read about in Acts 1 and 8. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So the reason why you see today in the Christian church, especially these Pentecostal churches, they be doing things, hey, shabara, shabara, hey, ta, 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 or, that's not what we're reading here. This shabara, shabara garbage is, is what is called in the, in the, in the history, is called glasolalia, glasolalia, meaning speaking in other tongues that nobody understand, meaning what? You've got the devil on you, you understand? There was a white man called Charles Parham. Charles Fox Parham. He's the one that came up with that. You understand? A white man that came up with that to confuse our people. That's why our people today, when they are especially these, these pastors, Bubushiri, Umboro, they be saying, hey, Shabara, as if like there's something going on. No, there's nothing going on. Only the devil is going on. Okay? Go ahead. You know what? Hold that. Give me the book of First Corinthians. Okay? First Corinthians, I'm going to show you something right here. First Corinthians, okay. First Corinthians chapter 13. First Corinthians 13 verse 8. Because speaking of which, speaking of, we're on the subject in terms of speaking with other tongues. Because they don't understand. So they are using glasolalia to confuse our people that they still have the power of the Holy Ghost. Even during the time of the, 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 the day of Pentecost, our forefathers, the apostles, were not speaking in shavara, shavara. What, what? No, no, no. They were not doing that. They were speaking in the languages of their brothers and sisters that grew up in other lands that spoke the native languages of those lands. When they got to Jerusalem, they were able to understand them in the language they grew up in. You understand? Now read that. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8. Come on. First book of Corinthians chapter 13, verses 8. Read. Charity never faileth, but mm -hmm. whether, whether they be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether they be tongues. Hold on. It says, charity never faileth. That goes into love your neighbor as yourself. It says, but, it says, but whether they be prophecies, they shall fail. Go ahead. Whether they be tongues, they shall cease. Stop right there. Whether they be tongues, they shall cease. Meaning, what we read about in the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 4, is as all of that going to stop. That's what the Apostle Paul is letting us know here. Is You understand? Whether they be prophecies, they shall fail. Meaning what? Yes, you focus on all the... Let's say you, you focus on the prophecies and all that. Guess what? But if you don't have charity, meaning love your neighbor as you love yourself, says, that never fails. You understand? Loving your neighbor as yourself, that never fails. That's what the Lord is saying right there. So now, read that again, verse 8. Come on. First book of Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 8. Go ahead. Charity never faileth, but whether they be prophecies, they shall fail. Mm -hmm. Whether they be tongues, they shall cease. They shall whether what? they shall cease. He says, whether they be tongues, they shall cease. The meaning... They are going to come to an end. What we what we read, what we are what we just read in Acts 2 verse 4 is as that's gonna stop. Go ahead. Whether they be knowledge, it shall it shall vanish away. You see that thing right there? So what the Lord is keep reading, actually. For we know in part, and we prof prophesy in part. Come on. 
But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. You see what he's saying? The, the Apostle Paul is prophesying now about the second coming of the Messiah. That's what he's prophesying about. Because he says right now we know in part and we prophesy in part. Meaning we don't know everything that is written in this book. The Lord is only exposing to us the things that are going to be necessary for us to come out of slavery, to get our minds right. He says, but that which is perfect is come. Meaning when the Lord is returned, he says, then that which is in part shall be done away. Meaning we're going to know all things when the Lord returns. But right now, the understanding is giving us is the understanding to repent and prepare ourselves for the second coming of Christ. You understand? So I just wanted to give you, brothers and sisters, an example of what we're reading in the book of Acts. Go back to Acts 2 verse 4 again. Okay, come on. The book of Acts chapter 2 verse 4. Mm -hmm. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Read. Verse 5. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. You see what those people was that gathered together during the day of Pentecost? It was Jews, devout men, it says, out of every nation under heaven. Because we all had to come to Jerusalem to worship, to observe the high holy days that the Most High God ordained. One of those high holy days was the Feast of Pentecost. That's why it says we're coming out of every nation under heaven. Because where was the Jews? We would be scattered among all nations on earth. Watch this. Let's see the prophecy. Okay. Get that into 28 verse 64. Because Moses prophesied about that thing. That we would be scattered among the nations. Okay. The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 28 verse 64. Read. Really? And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other and mm -hmm. they thou shalt, thou shalt serve the gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wooden said? stone even wooden stone so the lord is the moses prophesying that we would be scattered among all nations on earth you understand throughout all the captivities that we, we, we were going to go under even unto these last days so now, during the Feast of Pentecost, you had many of, many of our forefathers that we were scattered all over the earth. We were scattered all over through the captivities that we've been under during the time of the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Greeks, the Romans, the Persians. I mean, the Greeks, um, the, the Assyrians, the, Pers the, the, the Babylonians, the Persians, the Romans, and the Greeks. You understand? And today, we are all over the earth. The transatlantic sub sahara Silk Road we are scattered all over the earth. Forced migration, colonization. We are scattered all over. So now, watch this. Give me the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 39. Acts 2, 39. Watch this. Okay. It says, we what out of every nation under heaven. Because that's where we were scattered, all over. Okay. Read. Acts 2, verse 39. Come on. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 39. Mm -hmm. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. You see that thing? It says, because the promise is unto you, and to all your, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, meaning scattered. Those are the dispersed, the 12 tribes of Israel that are scattered abroad. Those that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. How is the Lord going to call those that are far off? The Lord will send the prophets to go out and teach the people the laws of God. Those that are far off. Jump up to verse 36. Let's see who he's talking about. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 2 verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom he have crucified, both Lord and Christ. So he's talking about the house of Israel. The house of Israel. The house of Israel is those people that the promise is made to. And to our children and to all that are far off. Do you hold that? Give me Jeremiah 42. Jeremiah 46 verse 27. Jeremiah 46 and verse 27. Let's read that. 
Okay, give me Jeremiah 46, verse 27. Yeah, this. Jeremiah 46, verse 27, really? The book of Jeremiah 46, verse 27. Go ahead. But fear not thou, O my mm -hmm. servant Jacob, and be not dismayed, O Israel. For behold, I will save thee from afar off, and thy seed. Behold, I will save thee from afar off. He says, behold, I will save thee from afar off. So who is he talking about? He's talking about Jacob. He's talking about Israel, the 12 tribes. Go ahead. I will save thee from afar off and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And mm -hmm. Jacob shall return and be in rest and at ease. And none shall make him afraid. You see that thing right there? That's what we read in Acts 2, 39. That's the same thing we read. So let's go back. You know what? Give me James 1 and 1. James chapter 1, verse 1. James 1 and 1. Remember, he's talking about Jews, devout Jews, out of every nation under heaven, because we would be scattered. You understand? And because we're scattered in those lands, we will be keep speaking the native languages of those lands. Okay? James 1 and 1. Read that. The book of James chapter 1, verse 1. Come James, on. a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. You see that thing? To the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. The 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Give me that in First Peter 1 and 1. First Peter chapter 1 verse 1. Okay. To the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Come on. First book of Peter chapter 1 verse 1. Mm-hmm. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bethia, Bethnia. Bethnia. So these strangers that are scattered abroad throughout all these lands, what are they called? Who are they? Keep reading. Next verse. Go ahead. Elect. Elect according to the full knowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, and to obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. You see that thing? It says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Who's the elect? Get that in Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45 verse 4. Let's see who is the elect that are scattered throughout all these lands. You understand? According to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Okay, read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45 verse 4. Mm -hmm. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect. And Israel, mine elect. Israel, mine elect. Let's go back to Acts now. Acts chapter 2, verse 6. You understand? Let's start at verse 5. Go read verse 5 again. Acts 2, verse 5. Let's read that once again. Okay, come on. The book of Acts chapter 2, verses 5. Read. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout mm. men, out of every nation under heaven. Go ahead. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. You see that thing? Is that the reason why it was a miracle is because they were like, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Because remember, our forefathers that was coming out of every nation under heaven, when we arrived there, it says what? It says they had the apostles speak in the language of their captivity. That's what he's saying right there. Go ahead. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? You see what they're asking? He says they were amazed. This was amazing. This was a beautiful thing. It was a miracle. Wow. This was beautiful right here. So in the churches, they don't understand this. That's why now in the, in the churches, they push glossolalia, which was, a, what, which was a demonic doctrine that was pushed by the white man. So our people, they are following that in those religions because they don't understand what it's saying here. You understand? So but the, the Bible is letting us know plain. They say, listen, it says, behold, it says, what are not, the, are not all these which speak Galileans? Because what was the main language that was spoken then? It was Hebrew. So now they are because their native their native language in Galilee was Hebrew. 
So now our forefathers and foremothers coming from all those different nations, the lands that were scattered about, they are speaking different languages. They are speaking Italian. They are speaking Tsonga. They are speaking Peri. They are speaking Ndebele. They are speaking French. You understand? They are speaking Spanish, so on and so forth. When they got to Jerusalem, the apostles, they, they spoke in Hebrew, but they were able to understand the apostles as if the apostles were speaking in the languages wherein they were born. That was the miracle. You understand? Go ahead. And how here we, every man, in our own tongue, when we were born. You see that thing? Read that verse again. Read verse 8 again. Come on. The book of Acts chapter 2, verse 8. And how hear we, every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? He says, and how hear we, every man in our, he says, they hear, they, he says, how hear we, every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? So they are hearing the apostles speak in the languages wherein they were born, the languages of their captivity. So Acts 2, Acts 2, Verse 4, 6, and 8, it breaks down what we are reading, what the churches are confused about. Okay, go ahead. Parthians. Parthians, Parthians. is the Persians. So is, remember, read verse 5 so we understand what this is talking about. Read verse 5 again. The book of Acts chapter 2, verse 5. Go ahead. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. He says there were devout men, meaning devout according to the law, out of every nation under heaven. So he's going to tell you the nations that we were coming out of. Now read verse, verse 9 now. Remember, verse 5 is saying we were coming out of every nation under heaven. Verse 9 is going to give you the names of those lands that we're coming out of. Read. Parthians and Medes. And so Persians and Medes. So we're coming out of the land of Persia, the land of Media. Go ahead. And Elamites out of the land of Elam. The dwelling Elam, Elam, Elam. These are the East Indians. I need you to pay attention. I need you to follow me. Okay, go ahead. And the dwellers in Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia, that's the Middle East. That's the so-called Middle East. Okay, that's the Near East. So there's no such thing as Middle East. Is Near East or Far East? Go ahead. And in Judea. That's Jerusalem. And Cappadocia, mm -hmm. in Pontus and Asia. These are now these are Greek islands. These are Greek islands that were that we just read in the book of First Peter's one and one. Okay, go ahead. Phrygia, 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 Phrygia. That's an island in Greece. Go ahead. Phrygia and Pamphylia, Pamphylia, Pamphylia. Go ahead. In Egypt. Mm -hmm. And in part of, of Libya, about Cyrene. Come on. And strangers of Rome. Read verse 9 again. Let's read verse 9 again. Come on. Yes, sir. The book of Acts chapter 2, verse 9. Parthians and Medes mm -hmm. and Elamites really? and dwellers and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and in Cappadocia, in Pontus and Asia. There we go. Go ahead. Phrygia. Phrygia. Phrygia and Pamphylia mm -hmm. in Egypt and really? in the part of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews, proselytes. And proselytes. Okay, so it says Libya, that's North Africa. So Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. Proselytes is, is, is those of our forefathers that grew up, that were, that were following um, gentle customs. And when they, re when they repented, they converted, they, were, they returned back to the laws of Moses, animal sacrifice. So they, they were called proselytes. Okay, go ahead. Crete uh -huh. and Arabians. So Crete is an island in Greece. Crete. Crete, that's an island in Greece. Give me that, hold that. Give me the book of, um, give me Titus 1. Okay. Give me Titus chapter 1 verse 5. Okay, Crete. When it says Crete, that's Crete. Okay, read that. The book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 5. Go ahead. For this cause left I thee in Crete, uh -huh. that thou shouldest sit in order 
the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. You see that thing? So Crete is an island in Greece. Go ahead. Go back to where he was at now. Acts chapter 2 verse 11 again. The book of Acts chapter 2 verse 11. Mm -hmm. Crete and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. You see that thing? So all these nations, all these lands that were the way they, they, are, they, are, they are mentioned here from verse 9 to 11, these are the lands where our forefathers were coming out of to observe the Feast of Pentecost. And they were there before the Feast of Pentecost because we had to observe the Feast of what? The Feast of the Passover. You understand? That's why. So now we had to stay there in Jerusalem until we're gonna until the time when we're going to observe the day of Pentecost or the Feast of Pentecost. And we were speaking the languages that were spoken in these lands, Persia, Media, Elam, you understand, Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, that's Asia Minor, Phrygia, Pamphylia in Egypt, Cyrene, Libya, Rome, uh, Judea, you understand, Crete, Arabia, that's Saudi Arabia, you understand? So all these languages that we were speaking, we were able to hear the apostles speak in the same languages wherein we were born. That was the miracle right there. Okay, go ahead. Verse 12. Read. The book of Acts chapter 2, verse 12. Come on. And they were all amazed mm -hmm. and were in doubt, saying Come one on. to another, what meaneth this? What meaneth this? You understand? They were asking one another, what's going on? What does this mean? What does this mean? You understand? Because this was the miracle, according to what we read in Acts 1 and 8. Go ahead. What? And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? Others, mocking, said, these men are full of new wine. So the, the others, they were, others they were not amazed. Others, they were saying, these people is drunk. How are they speaking like this? What type of language is this? Because guess what? They, were, they didn't understand or like, how are they speaking these languages? Because that was the miracle. So everybody was like, was amazed, was surprised of what's going on. So now in the Christian church, especially these Pentecostal churches, you understand? They like to speak in those languages, in the language that nobody understands, class or lalia, and it's not what is spoken here. I'm going to prove that. Give me 1 Corinthians 14, okay? Because this is another chapter that they use to confuse the minds of our people. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Let's start at verse 1. Okay, come on. First book of Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. You see what he's saying? He says, follow after charity. He's going back to First Corinthians 13 and desire spiritual gifts. He says, but rather that ye may prophesy, meaning what? You'll be able to give understanding of the scriptures because give me that in Revelation 19 verse 10. You understand? But he says, but rather that ye may prophesy. Meaning what? Give understanding of the scriptures to our people that don't understand this book. Okay, Revelation 19 verse 10. Let's read that. The book of Revelation chapter 19 verse 10. Mm -hmm. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do, do it, it not. For I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship Go God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You see that thing? The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophesy to give the people the understanding of what the Bible is saying. Because in these last days, our, our people are going to be lost and blinded by what? By sin, by philosophy. You understand? So go back to 1 Corinthians 14, read verse 2 now. First book of Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. Mm -hmm. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not a man unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. So they use this verse in verse 2 to confuse our people. But the key says, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. You know why they use this? Because they don't understand what's going on. It's talking about, listen, the Lord is saying you're prophesying, right? 
So as you're prophesying, you cannot use an unknown tongue. Let's say we are in the room. You understand? We all speak English. When you come in, you speak French. If you are prophesying in French, you are teaching the word of God in French, or you are praying in French, nobody that speaks English is going to understand what you're saying. The only one that's going to hear what you're saying is the Lord. So, but now when they say, no, shamara, shamara, hey, ta, 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 it means they think, no, 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 that's the language that only God can understand so that the devil doesn't hear what you say. Because I hear a Negro say stuff like that. There was a Negro that said to that, he said that to me. He says, no, there isn't, because I asked the question. You understand? When I was still searching, when I was close, when the Mosai was almost close to open the understanding to me, I was searching. So now I'm asking this, because I was starting to introduce, like, what is this Bible that you're interested in? So he said to me, I was like, why do they speak like that? He's like, no, the reason why they speak like that is because it's so that Satan cannot understand what they're saying. I'm like, but that doesn't make sense. Eh? I don't know what to say to that, but I don't really get it. Isn't God, isn't he, isn't he the almighty? But I didn't ask him these questions. I was asking myself. You understand? Or if God is the almighty and Satan also, he, he knows, they say Satan knows the scriptures. So wouldn't he know that? And he wouldn't he know that time that they're speaking of? But, you know, that was just me questioning things. Okay, anyway, read verse 2 again. Go ahead. First book of Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. Go ahead. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto me, but unto mm -hmm. God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. You see that thing? Because nobody understands what you're saying. You're prophesying in French, everybody speak English. Nobody will understand anything you say. You understand? So it's a waste of time. So keep reading. Verse 3. Go ahead. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. You see that thing? But he that speaketh unto men, he man, meaning what? He says, but if you speak unto men and you speak in a language that they will understand, meaning what? In a room, in a congregation, we're speaking English. And you're prophesying in English, everybody's going to hear what you're saying. It says what? You'll be able to edify them. But if you're speaking in French and everybody speaks English, how are you going to be able to edify the people? You're not going to be able to do that. That's what he's saying right there. Nobody's going to be exhorted. Nobody will receive comfort because nobody understands what you're saying. You speak into the wind. You understand? Keep reading. Verse 4. Go ahead. First book of Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, mm -hmm. but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. So if you speak in French when everybody's speaking English, it says you edifying yourself. You just praying to yourself. You understand? It says, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church because the one that will prophesy in a tongue that everybody understands, they'll be able to edify all the people that are in the room. That's what he's talking about. You understand? Keep reading. Go ahead. Five, I would that ye all speak with tongues, but rather that ye prophesy. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with the tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. That's the key right there. It says, okay, if you are prophesying, it says, I would that ye all, he says, I would that ye all speak with tongues, meaning you speak with different languages, but rather that he prophesy. I mean, he says, what is the point of you speaking in an unknown language that nobody understands? He says, that's not, that's not profitable. He says, it's better that you prophesy in a language that everybody understands. You understand? He says, for greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with other tongues, meaning with tongues, meaning you're speaking in Tonga. Nobody understands Tonga in that, in that room. But when you're speaking in Tonga and everybody's speaking Peri, Nobody understands what you're saying. So he said, except he interpret, meaning there must be somebody to sit there to interpret what you're saying. You're speaking in Tsonga, somebody must sit there and speak in English for the people that understand English so that they may be edified. That's what the churches have not understood yet. He said that the church may receive edifying. The apostle Paul is letting you right there. Jump down to verse 21. Watch this. First book Corinthians chapter 14, verses 21. Mm -hmm. In the law it is written, 
with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And yet, yes. for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. He says, yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. He says, for in the, he says, in the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak to these people. So the Lord is saying, because the Lord, because remember, the prophets prophesied that we are going to be scattered among all nations on earth. That's why in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 5, it says, we're coming out of every nation under heaven because we were scattered in those lands and we would speak the languages of those lands where we were scattered in captivity. So now it says, in those lands, the Lord says, I'm still going to speak to you. I mean, what? I'm going to have the Bible translated in the language that you can understand. That's what the Lord is saying. So when it says, in the law, it is written. Let's get that in the law. Give me Isaiah 28 verse 11. It says, in the law, it is written. We're going to Isaiah. Yes, we're going to the law. Isaiah 28 verse 11. Watch this. Okay, come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Who with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people? Read again, verse 11. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 11. Mm -hmm. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people? You see that thing? And with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to these people? So what we were reading in the book of Acts, that's exactly what Isaiah was prophesying about. That's exactly what Joel was prophesying about. You understand? So that now we understand the Apostle Paul is quoting what the prophet said. The Apostle Paul wasn't speaking anything new. He wasn't pulling anything out of the sky. He was quoting from the apostle. I mean, he was, he was quoting from the prophets. Now watch this. Go back to 1 Corinthians 14 verse 21 again. First book of Corinthians. Chapter 14, verses 21. In the law, it is written, with some men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And yet for all that, will they not hear me, saith the Lord. We oui. come on. Wherefore, tongues are for a sign, not mm -hmm. to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. So now the apostle, the apostle Paul he wrote things out to be understood. So let's keep it simple. He says, wherefore tongues are for, he says, tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe. Remember, the tongues goes into what, where somebody speaks a different language and now there must be an interpreter in the room to interpret so that they may be edified. He says, it's for those. Meaning different languages are for those that do not, that what, that he says, that what? That believe not. Meaning in terms of what? Because the, the only way for them to come into this truth, they need to be able to, uh, to, to, the truth must be delivered in the language that they'll be able to understand that they can read for themselves when you're not there. You understand that they may believe that which is written for themselves. You understand? It says, but prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. So prophesying, remember what we read in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1 through 3. It's saying prophesying is better because prophesying is going to allow you to edify the people so the people may understand what you're saying. That's why here verse 22 says, but prophesying serveth not for them which believe not. Meaning it doesn't serve for them which believe not, which don't believe. But for them which believe. Because guess what? When you prophesy, you're going to expound unto them the scriptures in the language that they will understand it. And if they don't understand, you must get an interpreter. Jump up to verse 13 so we can get the understanding. Because when you read the letters of Paul, the apostle Paul will say something in this verse. And when you read down, he explains it. He clarifies it. Or he may say something in the beginning of the chapter and he clarifies it in the middle of the chapter. So let's jump up to verse 13 so we can understand what he's saying. Read it. First book of Corinthians chapter 14 verse 18. Come on. Wherefore, at him that speaketh in an unknown tongue, pray that he may interpret. You see that? You see that? That he may interpret. He says, anybody that speak in an unknown tongue, he must pray that he may interpret, meaning get an interpreter. Somebody that will be able to interpret what is being said. Read on. 1 Corinthians 14. Okay. Verse 14. First book of Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14. For I pray in an unknown tongue, 
My spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. You see what he says? He says, for if I pray, you understand? For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. So guess what? Imagine our people, they are praying in an unknown tongue. You understand? You pray in an unknown tongue, it says, your spirit prays, but your understanding is unfruitful. Because nobody understands what you're saying. You're praying in French, everybody speaks Tsonga. What are you saying? Nobody understands what you're saying. So all of that is unfruitful to the people that are in the room with you. Go ahead. What is it then? I pray with the spirit. And I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit. And I will sing with the understanding also. So he says, when you pray with the spirit, he says, you must pray with understanding also. Meaning you must understand what you're what you saying. Not only that, the people that are listening to you in the same room with you, they also must understand what you're saying. The same way when it comes to singing. You understand? He says, they must understand what you're saying. You must understand what you're saying. Read on. Else, when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupied the room of the unlearned say amen at thy giving of thanks? You see what I'm saying? He says, how shall he that occupied the room of the unlearned say amen at thy saying of thanks? At thy saying of giving thanks. How are they going to say amen when they don't know what you're saying? Somebody says just all praises, but they, nobody knows what you're saying. You're speaking in French. You're speaking in Spanish. Nobody understands what you're saying. Everybody understands song. When we speak like us, we are speaking in Spanish. No, How do we know when to say amen? Nobody understands what you're saying. So the Apostle Paul said, don't be saying stuff like that. So now in the Christian church, when they shamara, shamara, ho, sha, ta, 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 um, brum, brum, whatever there's, Nobody says standing there to interpret what the Negro is saying. Nobody's interpreting what they're saying. You understand? And they interpret that to say, no, they are in the spirit. They are full of the Holy Ghost. No, no, no. They are full of the unholy ghost. They are full of the unholy demon. Bupasta Wishiri, Bumboro. They are full of the unholy demon. And guess what? The whole church is filled with that. Understand? Read again verse 16. Go ahead. First book of Corinthians, chapter 14, verse 16. Come on. Else, when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how mm -hmm. shall he that occupies the room of the unlearned say amen at thy giving of thanks? Seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest. Because you don't understand what you say. So how are they going to say we agree? Because when you say amen, it says we agree. But how, how, how are they going to say amen, we agree, when nobody understands what you say? Go ahead. For thou verily gave, give us thanks well, but the other is not edified. But the people that are in the room, they are not edified. When you are saying amen, amen, but the people in the room are not edified because they, they didn't understand a way to say. Read. I thank my God. I speak with, with tongues more than ye all. Because the apostle Paul was educated. You understand? He wasn't a ragamuffin. He was a highly educated man. So he says, hey, listen, he says, now he's giving them their resume. He's giving them his resume. He says, I thank my God. I speak with tongues more than ye all. Meaning I excel when it comes to speaking in different languages. You understand? So he's saying, listen, don't try to be deep. Just keep it simple. You understand? Dummy. Go ahead. Yet in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding. Mm-hmm. That by my voice I might teach others also. Read. Than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. He says, what's the point? He says, I'd rather speak few words in, 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 in a tongue that people won't understand than speak 10,000 words in an unknown tongue that nobody understands what I'm saying. Because nobody's going to be edified. That's what he's saying right there. Jump up to verse 27. Watch this. First book of Corinthians, chapter 14, verse 27. Mm -hmm. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by cause, and let one interpret. You see what the Lord is saying? The Apostle Paul is saying, listen, in the spirit of Christ, he says, if any man speak in an unknown tongue, you speak in a language that nobody understands, he says, let it be by two, whether it be by two or three, he says, or by the most three. Or that by cause, it says, let one interpret. 
Let, let one interpret. You understand? So that if people can be edified, the listeners may be edified. Read on. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church. Mm -hmm. And let him speak to himself and to God. You see what he's saying? Because you're just speaking to yourself and to the Lord. Because the Most High God is the one who created all languages. So he understands whatever language you speak, the Lord understands it. But here he's saying, but if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church. Meaning, shut the hell up. Meaning, keep quiet. You don't know what you're saying. Just be quiet because there's no interpreter. Nobody understands what you're saying. He says, let him speak to himself and to God. You understand? So what we are reading here is, is the confusion that the Christian church are involved. The, the Christian church, they don't understand 1 Corinthians 14. Neither do they understand Acts chapter 2 verse 5. They don't understand it. They don't, they don't understand Acts 2, verse 5, 6, and 7, and 8. They don't understand any of it. You understand? Because they think that glossolalia is, is, the, is the language that proves that you have the Holy Spirit. No, that's not what it proves. It proves that you are unlearned and you are foolish. You understand? And I'll give you an example of what that means, what, what that is in the law. Give me the book of Deuteronomy. Give me Deuteronomy. You know what? Give me Isaiah 8. Let's go to Isaiah. Okay, Isaiah chapter 8, read verse, um, read verse 19. Isaiah 8 verse 19. I'm going to show you when they say, shabara, shabara, hit, ta, 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 brrr, whatever they do in the church, that foolishness. Here's what Isaiah, this is how Isaiah explains it in the spirit of Christ here. Read that, Isaiah 8 verse 19. Come on. The book of Isaiah chapter 8 verse 19. Go ahead. And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits, Mm -hmm. And unto wizards that peep and that matter. And that what? And that matter. You see what? That matter. That muttering thing. Does the shabara shabara. Hey, ta, ta, ta. These are all. Does, this is all demonic activity. What the churches are doing. They are involved in worshipping of demons. That Those churches are full of the devil. Because it says. When they shall say unto you. Seek unto them that have familiar spirits. These are all familiar spirits. And unto wizards that peep, they say they can see the future. You understand? They can see the past. And that matter, that muttering is glossolalia. That evil speech that they, they do in the church to prove that they, uh, they have the Holy Ghost, which, which they do not. You understand? It's called muttering. Go ahead. Should not a people seek unto their God mm -hmm. for the living to the dead? Shouldn't the people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? The people should seek unto the Lord, but our people don't seek after the Lord. They are seeking after Satan. That's why they, they what? They get themselves involved in uh, familiar spirits. You understand? Wizards, the wizards that peep is talking about these wicked pastors. These are wizards that peep that end that matter. And they convince and deceive our people saying they've got the Holy Ghost. No, they don't got the Holy Ghost. Okay, so now let's go back. Go back to Acts now, Acts chapter 2. Okay, Acts chapter 2, verse 8. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 2, verse 8. Go ahead. And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were mm -hmm. born? You see that thing? Meaning what? They were able to understand what the apostles were saying because they what the apostles when they spoke. The people were able to hear them speak in the language wherein they were born. You understand? Although the apostles were not speaking those languages. But when they spoke Hebrew, what the people heard was what? The people heard Italian. The people heard Tonga. The people heard uh, Peri. Whatever the case may be. That was, that, that right there, that was the miracle. You understand? That was the miracle. So now, Acts chapter 2 now, jump down to verse 14. Okay? Read 13, we're going to read down. Acts 2, verse 13, down. Read what you got. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. They thought the people was drunk. Go ahead. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. So now the Apostle Peter is going to clear up the confusion because 
those that did not believe, those that were mocking, they thought that the people was drunk. The Apostle Peter is going to clear up the confusion with the, of, of what's going on. Remember, the Apostle Peter was the head apostle. So now he's going to explain to them what's going on. Go ahead. For these are not drunken, as he suppose. Mm -hmm. Seeing it is but the third hour of the day. He says, these men, these men are not drunk as you think they are. He says, as what? As but the he says, it is but the third hour of the day. It's 9 a.m. It's 9 a.m. in the morning. The third hour of the day. They are not drunk, these men. He's going to explain to them what's going on. Keep reading. Go ahead. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Now, I'm going to stop right there. I want to show you something about our forefathers. You see, our forefathers, they were in tune with their history. I want you to understand that. Our forefathers, they were well-studied men. They studied the scriptures. They studied the law. They studied what the, what the, what they studied the prophets. You understand? So, the apostle Peter is coaching, he's going to quote Joel. Because why? Because he read the book of Joel. That's why he's, he's, he's explaining to them that, listen, these men are not drunk as you think. Seeing but it's 9 a.m. in the morning, they are not drunk. What's going on is that which is what? That which is written or spoken by the prophet Joel. You see that, brothers? That's why it's important for you to study. Because an example here, the, the apostle Peter... We are seeing an example of our forefathers, the apostle Peter, that he was well studied. So was that the rest of the apostles. They were in tune with the law and what and what the prophet said. Okay, go ahead. Verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says mm -hmm. God. I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Mm -hmm. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Mm -hmm. And your young men mm -hmm. shall visions Wait. and your old men shall dream dreams you see what he's saying he says listen because this is what this this is that which was spoken by the prophet joel remember we just read about that everything that we're reading about from verse one all the way down to verse um verse verse eight is what the apostle peter is explaining here in verse 17 it says it shall come to pass in the last days saith god I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Which flesh? The Jews that were coming out of every nation under heaven in verse 5. You understand? That's the all flesh. And that your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. So what we're reading here in Acts 2.17 is what we've been reading all this time. All these pieces that we went over is to explain what we're reading here in verse 17. You understand? Go ahead. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days my, of my spirit. And they shall prophesy. So now, now we are in the last days because remember the last days started when Christ died and went back to the Father. That was the beginning of the last days. Actually, when Christ was born, that was the beginning of the last days. From that time on unto this day, we were in the period called the last days. And guess what? The young men, the sons and daughters, fathers and mothers, we have been prophesying. How have we been prophesying? Let me show you with the men. Give me that in Luke 14, 23. I'm going to show you with the men. The men, this is how the men are prophesying in these last days. Okay? Luke 14, verse 23. You know what? Let's go to the Old Testament first. Give me the book of Isaiah 30. Okay? Isaiah 30, verse 20. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 20. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 20. Come on. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity, mm -hmm. and the water of affliction, Wait. yet shall not my teachers, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. Come on. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers. But he says, but your eyes shall see thy teachers. You understand? It says your teachers will not be removed into a corner anymore, but your eyes will see their teachers. Where they want to see the teachers? Give me that in Proverbs chapter 1. Okay? But your eyes shall see thy teachers. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 20. But your eyes are going to see your teachers. Okay? Proverbs 1 verse 20. Come on. The book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 20. Mm -hmm. Wisdom cried without she uttereth her voice in the streets. 
You see that thing is as wisdom crieth without, meaning outside. You understand? In the highways and byways. Is that she uttered her voice in the streets. Go ahead. She cried in the chief place of concourse. Meaning in the street corners, the highways, the, the highways, the highways and hedges. Go ahead. In the openings of the gates. Mm -hmm. In the city, she uttered the word saying. You see that? So wisdom crieth without. That's why it says your eyes shall see thy teachers. Your eyes are going to see your teachers. Where your teachers will be? Your teachers will be in the street corners, bringing the truth out, teaching the people, building the people up, bringing our people to Christ to repent and keep the commandments and wait for the second coming of the law. Preparation for the second coming. You understand? So that's what we're reading here. Okay. Now watch this. Give me that in Luke 14 now, verse 23. Luke 14, verse 23 says, your young men shall prophesy. Okay. That's what we're reading about now. Go ahead. Luke 14, 23. The book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 23. Come on. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges mm -hmm. and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. You see that thing? So the servants will go out to the highways and hedges and compel the people to come into the house of Israel. So that's what we're doing. When we go to camp, that's exactly what we are doing. We are compelling our people to come into this truth, to come and learn. Give me that in Romans 10 verse 14. Romans 10 verse 14. Read that. The book of Romans chapter 10 verse 14. Come on. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Mm -hmm. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Wait. And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they hear without a preacher? Meaning, how is the people going to believe, you understand, in whom? He says, how are they going to call on the Lord in whom they have not believed? Because our people, the reason why our people don't believe on the Lord, that's why they don't know. They, that the people, the reason why the people don't believe on the Lord, because they don't know how to call on the Lord. Because they don't know who the Lord is yet. In the Christian churches, our people don't know who God is. They have never served the God of Israel in their life. You understand? It's only now when we go to the street course to teach our people about the laws, statutes, and commandments, who they are, who the Most High God is. Now that's the beginning of what? The beginning where the prophecies that we read in Joel, the prophecies that we read in the book of Acts is coming to pass. You understand? Go ahead. And how shall they preach except they be sent? You see that thing? How are they going to preach except they be sent? That's what we read in Luke chapter 14 verse 23. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. Isaiah 30, verse 20. You understand? Because the Lord will what? The Lord will send the teachers to the street corners so that the people will may see them and ask questions. You understand? Go ahead. As it is written, mm -hmm. how, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. You see that thing? He said, that's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing for the for the what for those that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things, meaning the good news that the kingdom of heaven is at hand and the kingdom of heaven is only for the 12 tribes of Israel. That's the good news right there. You understand? That goes into the young men that are going to prophesy. We're going to go to the street corners and wake the people up. Now he's talking about now it goes back into it goes into what? The daughters as well. Go back to Acts 2 now. Acts, I'm going to show you how the daughters, our sisters, are going to prophesy. Acts chapter 2, read verse 17 again. The book of Acts chapter 2, verse 17. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in the last days, said God. Mm -hmm. I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Wait. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. So the sons will prophesy, the, the, the men, where do they go? Because the men will take up their rightful place, meaning to go to war. So what will the woman be doing? How is the woman going to be able to prophesy? I'm going to show you that thing. Give me the book of Titus. Mm -hmm. Give me Titus 2, verse 3. This is how the women are going to prophesy. We go to war, the women, guess what they do? They deal with the children, they deal with the young women, they deal with the children. Watch this. Titus 2. Okay. Titus chapter 2, read verse 3. Come on. 
the book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 3. Mm -hmm. The aged woman, likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Wait. False accusers mm -hmm. are given too much wine, teachers of good things. You see that thing? Is that the aged woman, likewise, that they may be in behavior as becometh holiness. So the older women, their job is to what? Is to conduct themselves according to thus saith the Lord. The examples he's giving is as what? Holiness, not false accusers, meaning gossipers, not given too much wine, they must not be drunks, they must be teachers of good things. How are they, how do they teach? They teach by their example, the way they carry themselves, their conversation, how they deal with their husbands, how they deal with the men of Israel. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 4. That they may teach the young women to be sober, mm -hmm. to love their husbands, Go ahead. to love their children. You see that thing? That's their order. This is the order for the women, okay? To love to teach the young women. That goes into the teenagers. That goes into these toddlers, the ones that are running around. Yes, it's talking about that. It's talking about the kids and the teenagers. You understand? The young women and the young women that are ready to be married. You understand? And those that are being prepared for marriage. They must teach them to be sober, to love their husbands because they are being prepared for marriage. So that when they get married, they know how to love their husbands, to love their children. So that when they get married, when they have kids, they know how to love their children. Because these aged women will do what? Will teach them. Go ahead. To be discreet. Mm -hmm. Chase. Keep us at home. They must take care of the house. They must take care of the house. They must move with discretion. You understand? They must open their mouth in wisdom, like it says in Proverbs 31, 26. Sirach 26, verse 14. Keepers of their houses. Okay, go ahead. Good. Obedient to their own husbands. Mm -hmm. That the word of God be not blasphemed. You see that thing? You see, that's a, that's a, this is a heavy verse right there. It says, obedient to their own husbands. So the aged women, because they are obedient to their own husbands, they'll be able to teach the young women also to be obedient to their own husbands. When these women disrespect their husbands, guess what? The word of God is being blasphemed. That's some heavy stuff. Because that means that, because for them to obey, to obey the instruction of their husbands, it means they reverence them. They submit themselves to their husbands. When they don't do it, that means they submit and reverence Satan. There's no, there's, there's no any way around it. No, no. You don't submit and honor your husband. You don't submit and, and reverence your Lord. Guess what? Guess who you reverence? You reverence Satan. And you daughters, you daughters, young, you daughters that are yet to be married, you don't submit to leadership. You understand? Your fathers, you submit to Satan. I'm going to tell you straight. You understand? So that's what we're reading here. That the word of God be not blasphemed. So you sisters, you act like a demon, demonic Jezebel. Guess what? You are blaspheming the word of the Most High. We're going to check you. Okay? Why? Because we don't want the word of God to be blasphemed. Understand that. So when it says prophesy, this is how they will prophesy. They will submit themselves to the order that God gave them. Just as we submit ourselves to the order that God gave us. We go to the streets, we raise up the nation. They, what, they deal with the children to make sure that their sons and daughters are in their proper order. And the young women are in their proper order. That, that we don't see teenage pregnancy. You understand? Uh, girls, these young women, you understand? Talking to boys, planning to meet, to have sex. To bump and grind, the aged woman's job is to prevent that nonsense. You understand? When we go to war, and our job is to set everybody in order, according to that saith the Lord. So go back to Acts 2, okay? Acts chapter 2, verse 17. Read again. The book of Acts chapter 2, verse 17. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. Mm -hmm. I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Mm -hmm. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Read. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. So now he says, we said the young men will see visions. Give me that in Hosea 12 verse 10. The young men shall see visions. Okay. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 10. The book of Hosea chapter 12 verse 10. I have also spoken by the prophets. 
and I've multiplied visions mm -hmm. and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. You see that thing? The most that God says, he's got, the way he's going to speak to the prophets, he says, I is going to speak to the prophets by multiplying visions, the visions that are written in this book, and the sim and use similitudes by the ministry of the prophets, meaning what? Parables. You understand? Dark sayings, allegories. You understand? He's not gonna, some things he's not going to make them play. That's the point. You understand? So then he says, then he says, and the old man shall dream dreams. Give me the book. Give me the book of uh, Numbers chapter 12 and 6. Give me Numbers 12, verse 6. Okay. Numbers 12 and verse 6. The book of Numbers, chapter 12, verse 6. Go ahead. And he said, Hear now my words. Mm -hmm. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision mm -hmm. and will speak unto him in a dream. And I will do what? And will speak unto him in a dream. And I will speak unto him in a dream. The example of that is what we read in Genesis 37 with our forefather Joseph. When our forefather Joseph, he had a dream. That's an example of that. You understand? That's an example of the Lord speaking unto our forefathers in dreams. And we're able to read the scriptures to see what the dream means. That's what he's going into. So let's go back. Go back to Acts now. Acts chapter 2, read verse 19 now. Watch this. Remember, it's talking about the last days. There's going to be what men and women will prophesy. The men will go to the street corners and wake up the people. The women will what? The women, the aged women will teach the young women to have their husband to love their children. You understand? They will, they will prepare these young women for marriage because they also are married and they have experience because they reverence and submit to their husbands. And their husband taught them how to be wives, how to be mothers. So they also can teach the young women to be wives and to be mothers. And together, men and women, we build the nation. Men being in the front, women supporting the troops. That's, that's the order that the Lord has set up. Okay, now read verse 18. Read verse 19. Come on. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 19. Mm -hmm. And I will show wonders in heaven above mm -hmm. and signs in the earth beneath, Go ahead. blood and fire and vapor of smoke. That's, this is now going into war. Remember, in the last days, we will be prophesying, both men and women and the children, meaning the coming together of the 12 tribes of Israel. When the 144,000 is sealed, verse 19 is going to take place. War. War is going to take place. That means what? Christ will crack the sky. Understand that. So don't sleep, brothers and sisters. We are almost out of here. We are almost about to go home. So pay close attention. You understand? Look what's happening between Russia and Ukraine. And America is getting involved in this fight. The EU is getting involved. World War III is about to pop off. So don't sleep. There's famine going on. You understand? You look at the state of the nation address, what Ramaphosa be saying. You understand? There's no job. The jobs that he promised, the millions of jobs that he promised, none of those jobs are going to come to pass. You understand? He says jobs now, we have to rely on the private sector for jobs. Guess what? Hold that. You know what? Now speaking of which, give me that in Ecclesiastes real quick. Ecclesiastes 12. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter, because King Solomon prophesied about this thing of the lack, lack of jobs, company shutting down and so forth. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, read verse 3. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 3. Go ahead. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, mm -hmm. and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease because they are few. We? Oui. And those that look out of the windows be darkened. You see what he's saying? It says, in the day wherein, when the, the keepers of the house shall tremble. Who's the keepers of the house? The nations that, were, that own these companies and so forth. You understand? Remember when we were watching the, the small clip when it says, America has over 600 companies in South Africa. You understand? Letting you know, many companies in South Africa, they are not South Africans, nor owned by South Africans, so-called. You understand? They are owned by foreign companies and so forth. So it says... The keepers of the house shall tremble because of what? Inflation. You understand? The import and export business being affected. That means this trade is going to what? Trade is going to be affected. 
important export will be affected. And strong men shall bow themselves. That's talking about who's the strong man? That's us. And the grinder sees because they are few, because now there's going to be few jobs. And those that look out the windows be darkened because why? The companies are going to be shutting down. Go ahead. And the doors shall be shut in the streets. Mm -hmm. When the sound of the grinding is low. You see that thing? When the sound of the grounding is low, meaning what? There's no jobs, lack of jobs. There's going, the Lord is teaching us that there's going to be high rates of unemployment in these last days. That's what the Lord is teaching us. You understand? Go ahead. And he shall rise up at the voice of the bird. Mm -hmm. Meaning early in the morning. Go ahead. And all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Because of what? Because there is not going to be any joy. Because there's going to be lack of jobs. That means there's not going to be income. That means there's going to be famine. There's it's going to be affliction. There's going to be a lot of havoc that is going to come upon this earth. That's why it's very bad. That's why we afflict our souls weekly. You understand? To prepare ourselves for what's coming. You understand? You must feed your spirit more than you feed your flesh. Because there's going to come a time where it's going to be very heavy upon this earth in terms of famine. So that's why Operation Joseph must continue. We must keep on, we can, must continue to stock up on our food and so forth, to fill up the pantries in our houses, to make sure that we will be able to help one another when the time of need arise. Understand that. Don't, so don't sleep. Okay. Don't sleep on that. Okay. So um, go back to Acts chapter 2, read verse 19 again. The book of Acts chapter 2, verse 19. Mm -hmm. And I will show wonders in heaven above. And signs in the earth beneath. Rain. And fire. And vapor of smoke. So now this go into what? Nuclear war. Science in is a science in a science. It says, the Lord says, I will show wonders in heaven above. That's why you see all these chariots that are moving around in the earth. And signs in the earth beneath that goes into what? These underground bunkers and these nuclear bombs and these nuclear silos that the nations are building. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. That's what? That's the big bowl. Go ahead. Verse 20. Read. The sun shall be turned into darkness. Mm -hmm. And the moon into blood. Read. Before that great and notable day of the Lord come. You see that thing? Because before the Lord cracks the sky, the nations will need to go to war first. And that's what's going on now. The nations are about to go to war. That's why it says the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. He's letting you know that, listen, we're going to have to prophesy because the Lord needs to wake us up. Once the Lord is waking us up in these last days on the third day, guess what's going to happen? Yeah, while we are prophesying, sealing up the 144,000 and the elect of Israel, guess what's going to happen? Once the, the number is sealed, guess what will happen? The nations now, guess what they will do? The nations now are going to go to war because those four angels will allow the nations to go to war. While the nations are busy fighting one another, the son of man will crack the sky and everybody going to see him on that day. Understand that. So don't sleep. Understand the time period we're in. Okay, watch this. Give me Joel 2. Joel chapter 2. Okay, Joel chapter 2 and verse... 10. Joel 2 verse 10. Watch this. The book of Joel, chapter 2 verse 10. Read. The earth shall quake before them. Mm -hmm. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. Read. And, and the stars shall withdraw their shine. That goes into war. This is war right here. You understand? The Lord is telling you like this is war. The nations will be at war. While the nations will be at war, the great day of the Lord will be declared and everybody going to see it on that day. While the nations are going to, while the nations are at war, here's what will happen. Give me that in Matthew. Okay. Matthew. Give me Matthew chapter 24. Okay. Matthew chapter 24 verse 29. Watch this. Okay. This is what the Lord says he will do. You know what? Hold this. Go back to Joel. I'm going to show you something. Go back to Joel real quick. Joel. 
Okay, we're going to read Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, okay, read verse 30. Joel 2, verse 30 and 31. The book of Joel chapter 2, verse 30. Go ahead. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, mm -hmm. blood and fire and the pillars of smoke. That's war. The nations will be at war. Come on. The sun shall be turned into darkness. Mm -hmm. And the moon to blood. Wait. Before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. You see that thing? Is that the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. Before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. So this darkness, what is this talking about? It's talking about nuclear war that will be going on on this earth. And the skies are going to be darkened by this one, by the dark, dark cloud, the mushroom cloud of the nuclear bombs that are going to be hitting this earth. While that will be going on, the day, the terrible day of the Lord will be declared, meaning the Lord will enter in with his chariots. You understand? Watch this. Matthew now, Matthew 24, verse 3, verse 29. Matthew chapter 24, verse 20. We're going to go back to Joel. Okay, so keep that in mind. Matthew 24, verse 29. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 29. Come on. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun mm -hmm. be darkened. Uh -huh. And the moon shall not give her light. Read. And the stars shall fall from heaven. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Mm. You see that thing? Now, this is heavy right here. This is some heavy stuff. Read verse 29 again. I'm going to show you something here. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 29. Mm -hmm. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give a light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. So this is World War Three. So it says immediately after the tribulation of those days, meaning what? After slavery. So this is letting you know that the tribulation goes into captivity. While we are in captivity, the Lord will wake us up. He will revive our spirits. We will remember who we are. We are the 12 tribes of Israel. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to go out to the street corners, the highways and byways to wake our people up. As we are prophesying, our sisters also, they will be doing the same. How are they going to be doing? They're going to be applying Titus 2, verse 3, all the way to verse 5. While that's going on, it says what? It says... They says what the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven. That's going on to the satellites and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Meaning these nations are going to go to war. All that. Go back to Joel 2. Read verse 10 again. Okay. Joel 2 verse 10. I'm going to show you something. Watch this. Joel. Come on. The book of Joel chapter 2 verse 10. Mm -hmm. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble, the Wait. sun and the moon shall be dark, and mm -hmm. the stars shall withdraw their shining. Watch this. Give me Joel 3 verse 15 now. Come on. The book of Joel chapter 3 verse 15. Mm -hmm. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the mm -hmm. stars shall withdraw their shining. Because this is World War Three. This is now in the midst of a World War Three. While World War Three is going on, you understand? Watch what's going to happen next. Go back to Matthew 24. Read verse 30 now. Okay. Watch this. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 30. Come on. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. You see that thing? While war, while, while, while the nations are bombing one another, while the nations are warring with each other, he says, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. The black Messiah, Jesus the Christ, he was going to crack the sky. Go ahead. Come on. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. The tribes talk about the 12 tribes of Israel because we're going to know in that day or our time of our deliverance is at hand. Go ahead. The book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 30. Go ahead. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Go ahead. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. We. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with mm -hmm. power and with and, glory. This and with and great glory. 
You see what's going to happen when the Lord cracked this guy? Listen, it's not going to be, a, it's, go, it's going to be a day like no other. You're not going to be able to compare that day with no other day because we've never seen it before. It says, guess what? It says, then shall they see the son of man coming in the clouds, meaning the chariots of heaven with power and great glory. Go ahead. Verse 31. Come on. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Mm -hmm. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of, of heaven to the other. You see what the Lord will do? He's going to send the angels to call and collect us wherever we are scattered. That's what the Lord is a just God. The most of all the promises, the stuff, the Lord, all the things that the Lord says he will do, the Lord is going to surely do all of them. Not one of these prophecies shall fail. Watch this. Give me. None of these prophecies shall fail. Watch this. Give me the book of Joel now, chapter 2, verse 32. Watch this thing. Mm. This is some heavy Joel. stuff right here. Because remember, this is a this is a process of time. You understand? We prophesying, we're getting our minds right. You understand? And then the nations go to war because that number will be sealed. While the nations are going to war, the Son of Man will crack the sky. And that will be the day of our deliverance. Read what you got. Yeah, Joel chapter 2, verse 32. Come on. The book of Joel chapter 2, verse 32. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that whosoever mm -hmm. shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. The day of a deliverance. The day of a deliverance. Watch what happens next. Read the next part of that verse. Go ahead. For in Mount Zion and yeah. in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. You see that thing? Because in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. So guess what? All of this, the nations going to war is for the benefit of the 12 tribes of Israel being delivered while the nations are at war with one another. Go ahead. Come on. As the Lord had said, mm -hmm. and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. You see that? And, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall. Who's the remnant? The, the remnant of Israel. The elect of Israel that the Lord will preserve in these last days. To wake up the people so the people may be sealed. So we can go back home. Give me that in 2nd Ezra chapter 13 verse 29. Watch this. 2nd Ezra chapter 13 verse 29. Come on. Second book of Esther, chapter 13, verse 29. Wait on. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth. That's what we read. That's what we just read in Matthew 24, verse 31. Go ahead. And he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. Wait. And one shall undertake to fight against another. One city against another. Mm -hmm. One place against another. Go ahead. One people against another. Wait. And one realm against another. And one realm against another. Hold that. Give me Revelation 12 verse 7. One city against another. One people against another. And one realm against another. Watch this. Mm. Watch this thing right here. Revelation 12 verse 7. The book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 7. Go ahead. And there was war in heaven. Mm -hmm. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Come on. And the dragon fought against his angels. Now this, when it says one realm against another, is talking about there's also going to be war in the spirit world. Listen, there's stuff that's going to go on on this earth. We've never seen it before. We read about it, but we cannot even imagine it. We can try to imagine it, but listen. On that day, listen, is gonna be that's gonna be the darkest day on earth. Understand that all the realm of on the earth, the, listen, one realm of one realm against another, they also going to be at war in the spirit world and in the physical world. There's going to be war going on. Understand that. That's why we need the Lord to deliver us. Okay, these underground bankers will not do anything for us. These riches, the so-called riches, they are not gonna be be able to deliver us on that day. That's why the laws of God is what we must lean on because that's how we're going to make it on that day. Go back to 2nd Ezra 13. Okay, verse 32 now. 2nd book of Esther, chapter 13, verse 32. Go ahead. 
Mm -hmm. and the time and the time shall be when these things shall come to pass and the signs shall happen which i showed thee before go ahead and then shall my son be declared then shall my what and then shall my son be declared and then shall my son be declared let's talk about jesus the christ go ahead whom thou sawest as a man ascending who you saw as a man ascending hold it give me x1 and 9 whom you saw as a man ascending what is he talking about Ezra is prophesying about x1 and 9 when christ went up to them went up to sit on the right hand of the most high god x chapter 1 verse 9 watch this the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 9. Mm -hmm. But when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. That's when he ascended. That's when he ascended. They saw, he says, whom, they, whom thou sawest as a man ascending. That's what we're reading here. Ezra was prophesying. So go back to 2nd Ezra, chapter 13. Okay, verse 33 now. Come on. Second book of Esther, chapter 13, verse 33. Wait. And when all the people hear his voice, mm -hmm. every man shall in their own land leave the battle. They have one against another. Meaning one. Listen, it's going to be a major entrance. Everybody going to know the most like the son of man is, the, the, listen, everybody going to know it's wartime. While they are fighting amongst each other, oh, that's not war. As soon as they see the Son of Man enters into the atmosphere, guess what? They, it says what? It says when they hear his voice, they're going to stop the war, they fight with one another. All of a sudden, they're going to be in full agreement. They're going to be on the same mind to fight against the Black Messiah on that day, the great and terrible day of the Lord. Go ahead. And, and, innumer an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together. As the nations, read, willing to come and to overcome him by fighting, because that's what they think. He put it in their minds to think that they're going to overcome him by fighting. Go ahead. But he shall stand upon the top of the Mount Zion. But he shall stand upon the top of the Mount Zion. Guess what? Remember when 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 you when you watch that movie, the the the, the Transformers. You see the, 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 the revenge of the fallen. You see the fallen coming with a staff in his hand, the scepter, when he says, vengeance is mine. Mm. Listen, all these movies that you see, they get it from the Bible. Keep reading. Go ahead. And Zion shall come mm -hmm. and shall be showed to all men. Everybody going to see us on that day. Everybody going to know, oh my God. On that day, everybody going to know. The children of God, the people that we've been oppressing, the people that we've been looking down on, the people that we've been mistreating, the people that we enslaved, on that day, they're going to know that the Son of Man is coming to deliver his people. And their time of rulership is over. And our time is starting now. Jacob is God next. Go ahead. Everybody will know on that day. We what you got. Come on. Being prepared and built it. Mm -hmm. Like as thou sawest the hill graven without hands. It says being prepared. Right? And remember, Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. Right now, the Lord is preparing us. The Lord is preparing, is preparing for our deliverance by raising up prophets in these last days to teach us God's laws. That's what's going on right now. The Lord is reviving us. You understand? The Lord is preparing us for this, for this great and terrible day. Because that day is not a good day. That day is not going to be a good day. That day is going to be a great and terrible day. It's a day of darkness. The, when you read the prophets, all of them, when they describe that day, is not a good day. That's why Habakkuk said, listen, I want to be dead on that day. I want to be dead. That lets you know that that day is not the day that you want. You don't, you're not looking for that day. Yes, you're looking for it, but don't focus on, focus on getting your mind right. That's what the Lord is saying. Keep reading. And this, my son, shall rebuke mm. wicked inventions of those nations. Read. Which for, the, which for their wicked life are fallen into the tempest. You okay? Come on. 
and shall lay before them their evil thoughts and the torments wherein they shall begin to be tormented, which are like unto a flame. Hmm. And he shall destroy them without labor by the law, which is like unto fire. He says, listen, it's not going to be war for him. Understand that? It says, and, it says, and shall lay before them their evil thoughts. You see, do you, do you, not, do you understand what this is saying? The Lord says he's going to make sure, he's going to show the people the evils that they've done all their lives. And when I say all their lives, what do I mean by that? I mean all their lives ever since they've been born on this earth. Meaning what? From the time of Genesis, the Lord is going to show them all the evils that they have done. In the blink of an they're going to see it. When the Lord show up on the scene, the nations are going to see the evils that they have done. Not only the other nations they're going to see, but the evil of our, the evil of our people, they also are going to see the evils that they have done from the time of Genesis. They're going to see it. That's why it says, and shall lay before them their evil thoughts and torments wherewith they shall begin to be tormented. He's going to torment them with the evils that they've done, which are like unto a flame. So all the evils that the, the nations have done and all the evils that, that our people have done, the law says all the evils is going to be like a flame unto them from the time of Genesis. You understand? And he says, and he shall destroy them without labor. Meaning he's not going to have to do nothing. Imagine, it's like, a, it's, like a, it's like a memory overload. You are overloaded with all the evils that you've done because the Lord will bring them to your remembrance. Once you get wind of them, he says, you are going to be destroyed just via telepathy. The Lord will blow you up with the evils of the, with the evils that you have done since you've been born on this earth. All the lives that you've lived. This is heavy stuff. Understand that thing. Okay. Now watch this. Hmm. No, no, no. I don't want to go further. Let me not go further. Let's go back to Acts 2. Go back to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 19 and 20 again. The book of Acts chapter 2, verse 19. Go ahead. And I will show wonders in heaven above, mm -hmm. and signs in the earth beneath, Wait. blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Mm -hmm. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. You see that thing? The Mosa God is going to what? When the Lord, when the, the Mosa God sent his son Christ to deliver his people, the most the Lord must what? Must destroy the wicked. The, the Lord must go to Bosnia, which is Edom's capital, the United States of America, Babylon the Great, to shut down wickedness, to chop and kill with the sword. You understand? That's what needs to happen. Watch this. Give me that in a baku. Okay, give me Habakkuk real quick. Mm, I'm getting carried away now. Okay, Habakkuk. You know what? Mm, give me Isaiah 66. Let's get there. Isaiah 66, read verse 15. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15. You know what? Start at verse 14. Watch this. The book of Isaiah chapter 66, verse 14. Great. Right. And when you see this, your heart shall rejoice. Mm -hmm. And your bones shall flourish like an herb. Right. And the hand of the Lord shall be known toward his servants. And his indignation towards his enemies. Because the Lord is saying, here in Isaiah prophesying that we're going to get our minds right. As we getting our as we gathering our as we getting our mind right, our minds right, the Lord says, He says what? He says, and the hand of the Lord shall be known towards his servants. That's us, the prophets and his indignation towards his enemies. That goes into the other nations, that goes into the wicked of our people that hate and despise this truth, that will not repent. Go ahead. For, behold, the Lord will come with fire mm -hmm. and with his chariots like a whirlwind. Come on. To render his anger with fury mm. and his rebuke with flames of fire. You see what the Lord will do when he returns? That's why we always say, that's why we bring out the scriptures. We bring out the laws, the statutes, and the commandments, the counsels. You understand? The correction. 
Because if you don't want to correct yourself, this is, what the, this is what's going to correct you. The fire will be on your behind. You're going to die if you don't repent. That goes for you, brothers. That goes for you, sisters. You don't get your mind right. You don't follow the counsel that we give you. The most High God is going to kill you. You are going to die if you don't repent. I'm telling you right now, understand what the Lord is bringing on this earth. You understand? That's why there's no time to play with none of you. There's no time to negotiate. You don't want to keep the laws. Keep it moving. Get the hell out. Go out there and in the world and die alone. That's what the Lord is saying. We don't got time for nonsense because we are at war. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. We're about to get to be delivered. So there's no time to play in this truth at this point. You understand? Read it again, verse 15. Okay, come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 15. Read. For behold, the Lord will come with fire mm -hmm. and with the chariots like a whirlwind. Read. Render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Go ahead. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. Read. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. You see that thing? It says because by fire and by his sword, the Lord will plead with all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Meaning the dead bodies, there's going to be many dead bodies on this earth. A lot of dead carcasses. Why? Because of what? Rejection of God's laws. Not wanting to listen to counsel. Not wanting to apply the counsel. Where we have to speak to you about the same thing over and over and over again. You don't want to change it. Just go out in the world and die. I'm going to tell you straight. Go back into the world and drop dead. We're not going to feel sorry for you. You understand? Because you, some of you, you think this is a game. This is a plane to the place to hang out. This is a club to hang out. Mm -mm. This is the house of the Lord. And we're here to what? To win souls and to teach them God's law so they can repent, get their minds right. Because we are at war. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. You don't want to follow counsel. You can get, get the hell out, go back into the world and die. The most that God is letting you know right there what's going to happen, what's coming. You would rather be corrected by men than be corrected by fire and the sword. You choose your poison. You choose the one that you think is best for you. But guess what? The laws of God is what's best for all of us. You don't want to keep the laws. This is how the Lord will correct you. But you cannot be among us. You don't want to follow counsel because we don't want your evil to infect us. Understand that thing. The most High God don't play. You understand? We are about to get to, we are about to get delivered. The nations are about to go to war. Understand that. You understand? That's why they, the prophets, this is what they said. Watch this. Give me that in Habakkuk, okay? Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 3, because the Habakkuk, he spoke about this thing. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 14. Watch this. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 14. Wait. Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his villages. The head of the villages is Edom, Esau, Edom, America, Babylon the Great. He's the head of the villages. Go ahead. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Because the nations came out, because while the nations were at war with one another, when they heard the voice of the Messiah, they stopped the war they had with one another. They guessed what? They said, okay, we need to fight against this guy. That's what we're reading here. It says what? It says the head of the it says they came out as a whirlwind to scatter me because they wanted to overcome overcome him by fighting. That's what we read in Second Ezra chapter 13. Go ahead. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Their rejoicing mm -hmm. was as to devour the poor secret. Because right now the nations are rejoicing. They are rejoicing on how they are devouring us. They are rejoicing on how they are destroying us. They are rejoicing in how they are building liquor stores in every corner. They are building, um, they are opening uh, drug houses in every place. You understand? Abortion clinics at every corner. That's what they are, they are rejoicing because they are destroying us. They are feeding us pork and all that. All these nonsense that they are feeding us in the locations, in the cases. Guess what? It says, these nations, they rejoice. The Arabs, the white men, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Portuguese, the French, the Dutch, the Buddhists. The Lord says they rejoice at destroying us. They get comfort because we are destroyed. That's why they are at ease, these nations. You understand? Read. 
Thou didst walk through the sea with thy horses, through the heap mm. of great waters. Because guess what? Christ is going to crack the sky. He's going to come through the sea. What is the sea? The ozone layer, the firmament. Read. When I heard, my belly trembled. So Habakkuk said, when I heard when Christ was entering the earth, is as my belly trembled. Remember, it says, all they that saw, heard his voice, they stopped the war they had with one another. Habakkuk said, when I heard, my belly trembled. He says, listen, I was scared to death. Okay, go ahead. My lips quivered at the voice. Go ahead, read. Rottenness entered into my bones. He says, I die. He says, it's as if I died on that day when Christ cracked the sky. Read. And I trembled in myself. Read. That I might rest in the day of trouble. You see that thing? When it says rottenness entered into my bones, it's talking about great and terrible fear. It says what? It says, and I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. The great and terrible day of the Lord. Read. When he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. You see that thing? Because Christ is coming for an invasion. Christ is not coming for lollipops and gumdrops. Mm -mm. He's coming for invasion because there's war that's going to take place on this earth. The war of Armageddon. Doomsday. That's what they call it in the Bible. War of Armageddon. You understand? Watch this. Hmm. Give me a second Esdras, okay? Give me a second Esdras real quick. Because Esdras, he talked about this thing. Second Esdras chapter 7, verse 42. Watch this. Second book of Esdras chapter 7, verse 42. Great. He answered me and said, mm -hmm. this, pre this, this present life is not the end where much glory doth abide. Great. Therefore have they prayed for the weak. He said they prayed for the weak because we the weak. But he's saying this present life is not the end where much glory doth abide. Meaning these, these present this present day, this present life is talking about the, the, the days that we're living in. He says in these days that we're living in, it's not, it says what? It says what is the, it's not the end where much glory doth abide. He says this is not the end of all where the glory, where the great, he says, is not the end where much glory is uh, will abide. Meaning what? This is not all that it is. This is what he says. What you see here, this is nothing. What you see here, Ezra, this is nothing. The great life that you're going to get is when the Lord returns, when we go back to our homeland. You're going to really see life. Right now, we're not living. We're just surviving. Okay, but watch this. In order for us to see that great and everlasting life that the Lord promised to us, guess what? This is what must take place. Next verse. Go ahead. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time. You see that thing? He's, ex he's explaining it now, what we read in verse 42, when he says, this present life is not the end where much glory doth abide. Why? But the day of doom shall be the end of this time, meaning doomsday, World War III, the war of Armageddon. He says it's going to be the end of this kingdom that we are living in right now. The kingdom of the white man is coming to an end and he's going to go out with a big bag. Go ahead. And the beginning of the immortality for to come. Because Christ is going to give us the tree of life. You understand? The fruit of the tree of immortality. Christ is going to give us everlasting life. We're going to live forever. We're going to rule forever. Go ahead. We're going to dominate the nations forever. Read. Wherein corruption is past. Meaning no more corruption. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 14 and 15. Wherein corruption is past. Because right now our bodies are corruptible. You understand? We've got weak, these weak bodies we got. These bodies are corruptible. But on that day, everything is going to be changed. The Lord is going to change us in the twinkling of an eye. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon 9 verse 14. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 14. Come on. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. You see that thing? Our, right now, our, hold on. The thought of mortal men is talking about what? Is talking about the thoughts of sinful men are miserable. We've got miserable thoughts without these laws. Go ahead. And our devices are but uncertain. 
our plans are uncertain because we just mortal men. Read. For the corruptible body presses down the soul. This co the corruptible bodies talk about our mortal bodies. That's why it says corruption and this and and what and corruption will be what Cor way in corruption is past. After the day of doom, corruption will be no more. You understand? We're no longer going to have these corruptible bodies that we have now. The Lord will give us immortal life. We are going to be mortals because we are the immortals. Right now, it doesn't seem like that, but that day is coming. Okay, go ahead. And the earthy tabernacle with down the mind that muses upon many things. The earthy tabernacle is talking about our bodies, our frail bodies that we got, our mortal bodies that we got. It says what? It says it weighed down the mind that muses upon many things because our minds is not right. That's why we need the laws of God to cleanse our thoughts and our spirits, to keep these evil thoughts at bay. That's why the Lord said what he said here. Go back to 2 Ezra chapter 7. Read verse 43 again. Second book of Ezra chapter 7 verse 43. But in the day of doom shall Wait. be the end of this time and the beginning of the immortality for, for to come wherein Wait. corruption is past. Wherein corruption is past. Well, these mortal bodies, immortal bodies we got, they are going to be past. We're going to get immortal bodies. Wait. Intemperance is at an end. Intemperance, intemperance is going into what? Intemperance goes into lack of self, lack of self control. With because right now, as a people, we don't have that. We struggle with that. But with the laws of God, we're able to keep those evil thoughts and evil those evil thoughts and lustful thoughts at bay. Go ahead. Infidelity is cut off. Infidelity will be cut off because right now. You see, as a people, guess what? Many of our, our brothers and sisters, they tend to have kids, they cannot. The Lord is saying infidelity will be cut off because we're going to have many children. You understand? Grow it. Righteousness is grown. Mm -hmm. And truth is sprung up. Righteousness will be grown and truth will be sprung up because the most High God out of Zion shall go for the law. Because we're going to teach the laws of God. We're going to have the laws of God sealed in our minds on that day. After the Lord teaches us when we are after the wilderness. And then when we pass the tests, we enter into the promised land. Then guess what? Corruption will be no more on that day. You understand? And with that, we say shalom. More praises to the Lord. I'm going to end the class right there. Okay? Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I'm going to end the class right there. Okay. For I have received of the Lord that which also I have delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he, he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give the most our hand for that.